The Maybe you should make this a maximalism stream. Wait a minute. Maybe if I make it a maximalism stream, it won't be caught. I'm doing this. Hold on. I have gifts from the past, okay? And I'm going to put some of them in. And we're going to get this thing going. I will accept certain gifts. No matter what. Wait, that one's, these have to be, these have to be in the gift folder. There we go. This is going to work. Hold on. I'm, I'm picking some good ones from the past streams. We have enough time for me to do this. Let me see here. I have, I have the archive of all of ours. Oh my god, why are there so many Eevee variants? People really like Eevee on my stream, I guess. They really like the cute Eevees. It's beginning. All right, everybody, we're out. Nice to be here. Thank you. All right, everybody. Please welcome the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Let's begin the debate and let's start with the Holy issue that moly, folks everybody. consistently say is their top concern, the economy. President Biden, inflation has slowed, but prices remain high. Since you took office, the price of essentials has increased. For example, a basket of groceries that cost $100 then now costs more than $120. And typical home prices have jumped more than 30%. Oh, we're what getting off to a hot start, I can see. They are worse off under your presidency than they were under President Trump. We got to take a look at what I was left when I became president. Oh, when no. Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. The pandemic. We're dying. What the fuck? And all he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach into your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. <clears throat> we brought out in the, the position where Dude, we have no. 800,000 new manufacturers. Get him a jobs. Sudafed, quick. There's more to be done. There's more to be done. Working class people are still in trouble. I come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I come of household where the kitchen table, if the things weren't able to be met during the month, it was a, pr a problem. Price of eggs, the price of gas, the price oh. of housing, the price of a whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems. And we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of housing. We're going to make sure we build two, two million new units. We're going to make sure oh. we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination, what I was left with in... Oh, no, man. Oh, God. This is the worst he's sounded in a long time. Oh my god, wake him up! Somebody, somebody, somebody get Freddy Fazbear! Get Freddy Fazbear in here to give him a little bit of a heart rate boost! Jesus Christ! We're agreed to the reason why we're in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where... Not to be fair, Donald Trump also looks like he's about to fall asleep, so, you know. I take a look at all that was done in his administration. He didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there were things were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together. We created, I said, those jobs. We make sure we had a situation where we now, we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people, to $15 for, for uh, an insulin shot as opposed to $400. No senior has to pay more than $200 for any drug, all the drugs they can include beginning next year Whoa. in a situation is make, and we're going to make that available to everybody to all americans so we're working to bring down the price of around the kitchen table and that's what we're going to get done okay any berserk readers out there any fucking berserk readers out there this guy reminds me of the pope in berserk before the pope meets meets griffith when the pope is like hmm, huh, my life straight up hold on do i got the pope Do we got the Pope? Oh man, let me see the Pope. It's straight up. Oh no, it's so real. It's, where's the one? Oh, this is the one where it says, God bless you all. Oh my God, we got it.
It's him. Holy shit, it's so him. Look. Mm, God blesses you all. Oh, God blesses you all. Thank you, President Trump. We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. Uh, we have never done so well. Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929, by the time we finished. So we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had, we had given them back a a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce-back jobs, a bounce-back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job, and inflation's killing our country. Bounce it is back. absolutely killing us. Okay, so obviously that was a very silly nonsense from Donald Trump. Uh, being like, oh, we bet in one sentence, he said, oh, we during COVID, we bounced back. You know, we got hit by COVID, but we made the stock market even higher. But Joe Biden, he only got bounce back jobs. I mean, but of course, most of Trump's uh, appeal is not going to be in the truthfulness or sensibility of his statements. It's going to be that he sounds slightly more energetic than Joe Biden here and also on message. Um, he's not looking too hot, but he's definitely... He's speaking more slowly than Joe was. Joe felt like he was out of breath and about to pass out, but let's keep going. Thank you, President let's keep Biden. Going. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world, he, he's the only one who thinks that, I think. I don't know anybody else who thinks he had the greatest economy in the world. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, we found ourselves in a situation where his, his economy, he rewarded the wealthy. He had the largest tax cut in American history, $2 trillion. He raised a deficit larger than any president has in any one term. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who's had lost more jobs than he had when he began, since Herbert Hoover. The idea that he did something that was significant in the military. You know, when he was president, they were still killing people in Afghanistan. He didn't do anything about that. When he was president, we were still finding ourselves in a position where you had a notion that we were this safe country. The truth is, I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this, this decade, that done any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. Uh, president Trump, uh, I want to follow up if I can. You Am want I allowed to, to respond to him? Well, I'm going to ask you a follow-up. You can do whatever you want with the minute that we give you. Um, I, I want to follow up. You, you want to impose a 10% tariff on all goods coming into the U.S., how will you ensure that that doesn't drive prices even higher? It's not going to drive them higher. It's just going to cause countries that have been ripping us off for years, like China and many others, in all fairness to China. It's going to just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously, and give us a lot of power for other things. But he, would, he made a statement. Okay. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down, and then they bounced back. And he's taking credit for bounce back jobs. You can't do that. He also said you did that. he inherited 9% inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation. He did and that. And it stayed that way for 14 months. And then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing. And they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan, but we were getting out with dignity, with strength, mm. with power. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. President Trump, over the last eight years, under the most embarrassing in the history of America. Hmm. For both of your administrations, the national debt soared to record highs. And according to a new nonpartisan analysis, President Trump, your administration approved $8.4 trillion in new debt. Well, so far, President Biden, you've approved $4.3 trillion in new debt. So, former President Trump, many of the tax cuts that you signed into law are set to expire next year. You want to extend them and go even further, you say. With the U.S. facing trillion-dollar deficits and record debt, 
why should top earners and corporations pay even less in taxes than they do now? Because the tax cut spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID. And even after COVID, it was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred, that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example, the uh, corporate tax was- I don't really know if that's going to land for anyone. Like, people are really pissed off about the economy right now, for sure, under Biden. Like, they're definitely very mad about it. But also- Everybody, I think people still remember how bad finances were on, during the, like, pandemic. I don't think anybody's going to buy Donald Trump, like, yapping about how good the economy was. It wasn't. What people remember, and if you talk to them about it, what people remember was um, their jobs getting worse. Uh, everything, every, like, local business that they like being closed, some of them leaving forever. And permanently since that moment the the world around them looking worse than it did before and i don't know i'm sure that they also b would blame biden for like not doing as good of a job as he needed to but i don't know if this is the point for donald trump that he thinks it is cut down to 21 percent from 39 percent plus beyond that uh, we took in more revenue with much less tax and companies were bringing back trillions of dollars back into our country the country was going like never before and we were ready to start paying down debt. We were ready to start using the liquid gold right under our feet, the oil and gas right under our feet. We were going to have something that nobody else has had. We got hit with COVID. We did a lot to fix it. I gave him an unbelievable situation with all of the therapeutics and all of the things that we came up with. Oh. We, we gave him some- Oh, he's bungling his own line here. This is something that we've noticed with Donald Trump before. Um, with Donald Trump, we've noticed that he has to avoid, he knows he, for a while he would boast about developing the vaccine. And then his, um, his fan base started getting so mad um, about him mentioning the vaccine that now he doesn't refer to it as the vaccine anymore. So he can't even say that and it weakens his claim. I don't know if Joe Biden's gonna be able to capitalize on this, but this sounds really weak from Trump because he's just kind of vaguely Po posturing that oh you know we set joe biden up but but donald trump didn't donald trump completely bungled the, the beginning of covid instead of containing covid his inaction his deliberate misinformation resulted in millions of people dying millions of people are are uh, you know the blood is on trump's hands for that donald trump completely blew covid he completely failed on the response. And most, now a lot of people don't know what to make about all that, but people don't remember C Donald Trump's response to COVID being good. And in fact, um, like, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just, you know, he didn't, he didn't do a good start. So yeah. Something great. Remember more people died under his administration, even though we had largely fixed it. More people died under his administration than our administration, and we were right in the middle of it, something which a lot of people don't like to talk about. But he had far more people dying in his administration. He did the mandate, which is a disaster, mandating it. The vaccine went out. He did a mandate on the vaccine, which is the thing that people most objected to about the vaccine. This and is him trying to save face right here, by the way. This is him being, oh, you know, I invented, it's tr he's trying to say, I invented the vaccine, but I didn't mandate it, even though mandating the vaccine was an unequivocally good move. He did a very poor job, just a very poor job. And I will tell you, not only poor there, but throughout the entire world, we're no longer respected as a country. They don't respect our leadership. They don't respect the United States anymore. We're like a- And all of that is on Donald Trump. The, 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 the loss of respect, uh, first of all, Listen, America has a very, uh, a very spotty reputation worldwide, okay? Um, but Donald Trump made, he made an absolute butcher work of the diplomatic relationships between America and other countries. The entire time he was in office, he was a total wild animal, just tearing up random, seemingly at random. Do you guys remember when Donald Trump just completely obliterated the Iran deal? The absolute... The, the the universally agreed upon by nearly every party involved that finally a good deal had been reached and for no reason just because he attributed it to obama he decided to blow up the iran deal and now it's been an endless struggle with iran 
it's like, dude was a total mess on the global scale. Him talking about, oh, they don't respect America. Dude, that was your business. You were the one who made that happen. And to Biden's credit, like, I don't think he's done a great job, like, fixing it. But, you know, well, he didn't make that problem. There's a between weaponization of his election, trying to go after his political opponent, all of the things he's done, we've become like a third world nation. And it's a shame. The damage he's done to our country, and I'd love to ask him and Will why he allowed millions of people to come in here from prisons, jails, and mental institutions. Oh, this is the Hannibal Lecter! To come into our country and destroy our country. President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this. He should have. Oh, I wish he had name dropped the Hannibal Lecter again. That's his Hannibal Lecter rant. He's like, you let crazy people in here, murderers from psychopath asylums. Block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in a four-year period, number one. Number two, he got two trillion dollar tax cut benefited the very wealthy. I, what I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America, I mean billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they in fact pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent, 25%, either one of those numbers. They'd raise $500 million, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look. Oh, no. If we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. Oh, dude, no, man. Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. Oh, no! All of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on Social Security, they're going to destroy Social Security. This man is going to single-handedly oh, destroy Social Security. That This is like the worst thing that could happen for Joe Biden right now. The, 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 the number one issue that is polling that people don't want Joe Biden is because he's fucking old. We've talked about this on other streams, that like his age and his, and his perceived age is a really serious weak point for him. And the man just... He just had a total grandpa moment, totally obvious, unequivocal. The, 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 the moderator had to just take mercy on him. Dear God, oh God. These millions and millions of people coming in, they're trying to put them on social security. He will wipe out social security. He will wipe out Medicare. So he was right in the way he finished that sentence. And it's a shame what's happened to our country in the last four years is not to be believed. Foreign countries, I'm friends with a lot of people, they cannot believe what happened to the United States of America. We're no longer respected. They, they don't like us. We give them everything they want and they, they think we're stupid. They think we're very stupid people. What we're doing for other countries and they do nothing for us. What this man has done is absolutely criminal. Thank you. Demon Mama, tell me, is Joe winning? Uh, I hate to tell you right now, Joe is showing is very bad. Uh, Donald Trump is, is n his usual self. Uh, he's not very exciting, but he just got a big one over Joe, and Joe Biden sounds terrible. So, um, optics is a big deal when it comes to, you know, um, when it comes to presidential debates, optics is huge. Um, and... Joe Biden is failing optics on his weakest issue. He looks and sounds like a very old guy. And him completely bungling and not being able to finish that thought there is a really bad showing for him. It's very bad. President Trump, Dana. This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This here we morning, go. This, this, this question right here, Joe Biden needs to nail this or else... It's, it, this is his issue. This is what he can win on. If he doesn't nail this, it's bad, bad news for Joe. Court ruled on yet another abortion case, temporarily allowing emergency abortions to continue in Idaho, despite that state's restrictive ban. 
former President Trump. You take credit for the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which returned the issue of abortion to the states. Correct. However, the federal government still plays a role in whether or not women have access to abortion pills. They're used in about two-thirds of all abortions. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. And if you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex, but not really complex. 51 years ago, you had Roe v. Wade, and everybody wanted to get it back to the states, everybody, without exception. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, everybody wanted it back, religious leaders. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Now, 10 years ago or so, they started talking about how many weeks and how many of this, getting into other things. But every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. Now the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, it was a decision that was, it was a, an end result that was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Uh, Kansas, I would say the same thing. Uh, Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own decisions right now. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, I think uh, it's important <laughs> to believe in the exceptions. Some I'm people the person, have to follow I'm the a heart. Some people don't believes. believe in that. But I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Some people don't. Follow your heart. But you have to get elected also. And because that has to do with other things. You got to get elected. The problem they have is they're what, radical dude? because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the- Okay, come on now. After birth abortions? What is he talking about? First of all, that's insane. Secondly, he just admitted that he has to say whatever he needs to to get elected. That's an insane thing for him to say on here. Uh, that's a real, uh, that's a real, he's really testing whether or not he could shoot somebody in the face in midday and get away with it. Saying, you know, follow your heart, but I gotta do whatever I gotta do to get elected. That's a pretty bald-faced admission that you don't have any principles whatsoever. And now he's rattling off about, about fucking after birth abo abortions? What? Oh my God. Former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, well, put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. What happened is we brought it back to the states and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Thank you. President Biden? It's been a terrible thing, what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided. Supported Roe. And that was that's, this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. And this is the guy who says the state should be able to have it. We're in a state where in six weeks, you're, you don't even know whether you're pregnant or not, but you cannot see a doctor have your, and have him decide on what your circumstances are, whether you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states. Let each state have a different rule. Okay, all right. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in, to, they talk about that. But here's the deal. What? There's a lot of young women are being raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses, brothers and sisters. By just, it's, it's just ridiculous. And they can do nothing about it. And they try to arrest them when they cross state lines. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, that was, oh my, oh my God. Oh my dear God. This is his number one issue. Holy shit. Oh God. What is happening to his brain? I know what I need for this. Hold on everybody. I have a special thing. Hold on. I have a special thing we have to do here. Hold on everybody. We're doing something special for this particular moment because this is a mood that demands something more. Everybody, hold on. Give me just a second here. 
How do we do this? Hold on. Give me just a second. I'll wait for a minute. Let's continue. There have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border. We have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. Consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. And he opened it up, and these killers are coming into our country. And they are raping and killing women. And it's a terrible thing. Dude, as far on. as the abortion is concerned, it is now back with the states. The states are voting. Uh, in many cases, the, it's a, frankly a very liberal decision. In many cases, it's the opposite. But they're voting, and it's bringing it back to the vote of the people, which is what everybody wanted, including the founders, if they knew about this issue, which, frankly, they didn't. But they would have — everybody wanted brought back. Ronald Reagan wanted it brought back. He wasn't able to get it. Everybody wanted it brought back. And many presidents had tried to get it back. I was the one to do it. And again, this gives it the vote of the people, and that's where they wanted it. Every legal scholar wanted it that way. Staying on the topic of abortion, President Biden, seven states. Here we go. I'll let you do that. Uh, this is the same topic. Seven states have no legal restrictions on how far into a pregnancy a woman can obtain an abortion. Do you support any legal limits on how late a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy? I support it Roe v. Wade which had three trimesters. The first time is between the woman and the doctor. Second time is between the doctor and an extreme situation. The third time is between the doctor, I mean, between the, the woman oh, and the no. state. The idea that the politicians, they, they, that the founders wanted the politicians to be the ones making decisions about women's health is ridiculous. That's the last, no politician should be making that decision. A doctor should be making those decisions. Okay. That's how All it should right. be run. That's what you're going to do. And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. So that means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth, because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. Again, Come the on, governor, dude. former governor you of Virginia. You've got to respond to this. Put the baby this down crazy. and we decide what to do with it. So he's, in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. That is simply not true. Oh, thank goodness. That Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only if a woman's life is in danger, she's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not for late-term abortion, period, period, period. Under Roe v. Wade, you have late-term abortion. You can do whatever you want, depending on the state. You can do whatever you want. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. For 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, constitutional scholarship said it was the right way to go. 51 years, and it was taken away because this guy put very conservative members on the Supreme Court. He takes credit for taking it away. What's he going to do? What's he going to do, in fact, if the, if the MAGA Republicans, he gets elected, and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress, and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board at six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very, very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Thank you. Let's turn now to the issue of immigration and border security. Hey, he muted him! Biden, First mute of the night! Of migrants have illegally crossed the southern border on your watch overwhelming border states and overburdening cities such as New York and Chicago, and in some cases causing real safety and security concerns. Given that, why should voters trust you to solve this crisis? Because we worked very hard to get a bipartisan agreement that not only changed all of that, it made sure that we are in a situation where you had no circumstance where they could come across the border with the number of border police there are now. We significantly increased the number of asylum officers, significantly increased. By the way, the Border Patrol endorsed me, endorsed my ah. In addition to that, we find ourselves in a situation where when he was president, he was taking, separating babies from their mothers, putting them in cages, making sure they were, and then the families were separated. That's not the right way to go. What I've done since I've changed the law. Here's the one. This is where he tries to bat to the right of Trump, which that's going to go fucking great. I don't know why the Democrats think they need to do this. They're not going to win. Batting to the right of Trump is not going to win at, over any Trump voters who are right wing on immigration. Like that's an absurd thing. It's such an absurd thing. You're not, you're losing, you're alienating your own base in order to win someone who you're not going far enough for. There's no voter that's out there that goes, you know, actually Joe Biden really is harder on immigrants than the guy who just went on a rant about how immigrants are murdering everything that you love and they're attacking the women of your country. 
This is such a stupid decision. But everybody, everybody, everybody predicted it. And this was going to be what happened. I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40% fewer people coming across the border illegally. That's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we can do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of this. Oh, no. Think... Oh. He knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest He's border in the history of our country. The board, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. He decided to open up our border, open up our country to people that are from prisons, people that are from mental institutions, insane asylum, terrorists. We have the largest number of terrorists coming into our country right now, all terrorists, all over the world, not just in South America, all over the world. They come from the Middle East, everywhere. All over the world, they're pouring in. And this guy just left it open. And he didn't need legislation because I didn't have legislation. I said, close the border. We had the safest border in history in that final couple of months of my presidency. Okay, I'm sorry, but just a small little, uh, just a small little Trump, uh, you know, Trump fact check from the Demon Mama fact checking division. Can we remember that Donald Trump, the entire time he was in office, was trying to claim that there was like an invasion on the southern border? So, so now all of a sudden, even though everybody remembers, every person in their right mind remembers Donald Trump whining about an invasion on the southern border, about fucking caravans and all of this nonsense, now he's trying to say, oh, we were super safe. There was no problem at all. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Silly. Absolutely silly. All right. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's get through this. We had, according to Border Patrol, who is great, and by the way, who endorsed me for president, but I won't say that, but they endorsed me you just for did. president. He just pulled a Kanye. I'm not going to say it. Brandon, just speak to him. But... Look, we had the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in history. There's never been anything like it. And people are dying all over the place, including the people that are coming up in Thank caravans. Thank you, President Trump. Uh, President Biden? The only terrorist who's done anything crossing the border is one who came along and killed three, under his administration, killed an Al-Qaeda person, come in and his administration, killed three American soldiers kill three American soldiers. That's the only terrorist that's there. Bro. I'm not saying that no terrorist ever got through, but the idea they're emptying their prisons, we're, le we're welcoming these people. That's simply not true. There's no data to support what he said. Once again, he's exaggerating. He's lying. President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you've said that you're going to carry out, quote, the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, unquote. Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, just one second. He said we killed three people. The people we killed are al-Baghdadi and Soleimani the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world, and it had a huge impact on everything, not just border, on everything. He's the one that killed people with the bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We, ha we are- What? Okay, what? Okay, now they're both, now they are both just talking about, what is he talking about? Joe Biden killed hundreds of thousands of people with bad water? What? Can anybody, does anybody know what was actually being said there? I actually don't know what the hell that was supposed to mean. I, I, I genuinely don't know what he's even referring to. Is he talking about Flint? But that was before Joe Biden. That was, I mean, I guess it was under, the Flint stuff came to a head under Obama, which I guess was, you know, Joe Biden was vice. But like what? bad border but hundreds of thousands of people dying from the bad border where is that claim even come from like even outside of just a fact check like oh, get fact checked bro but legitimately what living right now in a rat's nest they're killing our people in new york in i rewound and i think he said bad border yeah but even okay so that's a little better i guess i guess
Who was has he? Who made the hundreds of thousands of people dying because of a bad border? JS Masochist says the whole border is nothing but corpses. Apparently, very Elden Ring. Woohoo! We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. The Elden Ring segment comes afterwards. By the way, if you are enjoying this absolute derangement of a debate react, the first maximalism stream or pseudo-maximalism stream we've had in a very, very, very long time. Please consider pressing the subscribe button down below and please make sure that you've pressed like. We'd love your likes. Anyway, let's get back to it. Oh, and don't forget to stick around after the debate. After the debate, we're gonna discuss the debate and then I am going to take you on a unbelievably magical journey where I rant, rave, scream, and cry about everything Elden Ring related. So if you've wanted to see someone uh, tap into the madness of the beyond, this is your stream. Let's continue. California and every state what? in the union, because we don't have borders anymore, every state is go. now a border. And because of his ridiculous, insane, and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing Good our one, citizens dude. at a level that we've never seen. Oh, super smooth. C clean as hell. ...seen before, and you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother, and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This well, is horrible what's taken place. What's taken place in our country, we? we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't what? want it. He opened the borders. Nobody's ever seen anything <laughs> like And we have to get a lot of these people okay. out. And we have to get them out. I don't know if that's going to... I don't know if that's going to land for anybody. We're literally an uncivilized country now. I don't think that's going to nail for anybody but his absolute base. There can't be anybody who's like, yeah, we're an uncivilized country now. Uh, I don't buy it. Okay? I don't buy it. All right? I don't think that one's going to land. Just just call on that one right now. Fast, because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in luxury hotels in New York City and other places. Our veterans are on the street. They're dying because he doesn't care about our veterans. He doesn't care. He doesn't like the military at all. And he doesn't <gasps> care about our veterans. Nobody been worse. I had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has the worst. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Joyce, that I got through Congress, uh, all of the different things I approved, they abandoned. We had by far the highest, and now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did. And I think he did it just because I approved it, which is crazy. But he has killed so many people at our border <laughs> by allowing President Trump. all of these people to come in. <laughs> and it's a very sorry, sad what? Day in President Biden, you have the mic. Every single thing he said is a lie. Every single one. For example, Veterans are a hell of a lot better off since I passed the PACT Act. One million of them now have insurance and their families have it. Their families have it because what happened, whether it was Agent Orange or burn pits, they're all being covered now. And he opposed, his group opposed that. Can we just take a moment? This is terrible. This is terrible. Can I, I, I think that my snap decision to do a maximalism stream here is quite literally the only thing saving any of this. I hope you all recognize it. You could be, you could be watching this with someone just sort of dryly trying to fact check the inane babblings of two completely brain cooked people. But instead you get to have your eyes treated to all of this madness including the uh, demented overlay that I've played, placed over everything. Maybe I should make the overlay a little more, a little, a little more opaque, or a little less opaque. Let's take a look. Maybe it's time to tone that one down a little bit, but it kind of felt like the right, the right play to have Dale Cooper's face overlaid over everything in this particular mood. It kind of sells exactly how I'm feeling about everything. All right, I think that's good. All right, let's continue. Also in a situation where we have great respect for veterans. My, spent, my son spent a year in Iraq, living one next to one of those burn pits, came back with stage four glioblastoma. I was recently in, in, in uh, France for D-Day, 
and I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, he was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. President Trump. Damn. Uh, first of all, that was a made-up quote, suckers and losers. They made it up. It was in a third-rate magazine that's failing, like many of these magazines. Uh, he made that up. He put it in commercials. We've notified him. We had 19 people that said I didn't say it. And think of this. Who would say I'm at a cemetery or I'm talking about our veterans? Because nobody's taking better care. I'm so glad this came up and he Perfect. brought it up. There's nobody that's it. taking better care. Can we just oh, hold on, everybody? Look, I just I just fixed it. Can you can we just acknowledge the Dale Cooper overlay here is now pristine? Look at this. The gifts are clear. My camera's clear, but overlaid hovering behind everything is our beautiful boy, our beautiful dissociating boy, Dale Cooper. ...of our soldiers that I have. To think that I would, in front of generals and others, say suckers and losers, we have... No Never let anybody tell you that streams can't be art, okay? And I am the artist. There is not... You, you come here to witness a masterpiece with zero God complex ego nonsense getting in the way of you enjoying two old men yelling at each other while I crack jokes and put incomprehensible noise on the screen. This is what art looks like. 19 people that said it was never said by me. It was made up by him, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was made up, just like the 51 intelligence agents are made up, just like the new thing with the 16 economists are talking. It's the same thing. 51 intelligence agents said that the laptop was Russia disinformation. It wasn't. That came from his son, Hunter. It wasn't Russia disinformation. He made up the suckers and losers, so he should apologize to me right now. Four-star general standing to your side who was on your staff who said you said it, period. That's number one. And number two... Okay, so weak response from Biden to, Joe, to Do Donald Trump saying you lied about me and you owe me an apology. This is one of the ways that Donald Trump gets away with lying so much is that he doesn't acknowledge anybody else's lies. Or he, sorry, he doesn't acknowledge his own lies ever and he only ever goes on the offensive. So him being like, you lied about me, you're a fraud, uh, you should apologize to me right now. That's a very like, it's a bright and memorable moment. And when Joe Biden kind of responds by being like, well, actually, it's, it comes off as weak. Joe Biden should have been like, you are the king of lying. How are we supposed to, we or the American people, how are we supposed to trust anything that comes out of your mouth? The horrible stuff that you've said, you want us to believe you didn't say that particular one? Come on, Jack. That's what his response should have been. His response should have been like basically exactly what I just said. Dude, the idea, the idea that I have to apologize to you for anything oh! along the line. We've done more for veterans than any president has in uh, American history. American oh, he almost had it. History. And they now are in their family. The only sacred obligation we have as a country is to care for our veterans when they come home and their families. And now he's and babbling. Equip them when they go to Damn, war. Damn, it was That's so close. He, all, he almost did it. He's doing now. They're doing more for veterans than ever before in our history. All right, thank you so much. Let's move to the topic of foreign policy. I want to begin with Russia's war against Ukraine, which is now in its third year. Former President Trump, Russian President Vladimir Putin says he'll only end this war if Russia keeps the Ukrainian territory it has already claimed and Ukraine abandons its bid to join NATO. Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? First of all, our veterans and our soldiers can't stand this guy. They can't stand him. They think he's the worst commander in chief, if that's what you call him, that we've ever had. They can't stand him. So let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. And that's based on every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine, if we had a real president, the president that knew, that was respected by Putin, he would have never, he would have never invaded Ukraine. A lot of people are dead right now, much more than people know. You know, they talk about numbers. You can double those numbers, maybe triple those numbers. He did nothing to stop it. In fact, I think he encouraged Russia from going in. 
I'll tell you what happened. He was so bad with Afghanistan. It was such a horrible embarrassment, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country that when Putin watched that and he saw the incompetence that he should he should have fired those generals like I fired the one that you mentioned. And so he's got no love lost, but he should have fired those <laughs> generals. no general. <laughs> that is so catty. OK, this is actually a big weak spot for Joe right now. The fact that Donald Trump is able to manage cattiness, which is one of the things that made people laugh and, and feel energy for Trump. Trump is still being catty as shit. Being like, I fired the shitty general who lied about me, you scumbag. What a loser. No love lost with that shit-ass general. He would have lost any war he was in. Like, that is old-school Trump energy. It's actually super bad for Biden that Trump is breaking that shit out. As, as, in, as nonsensical and stupid as it is, it at least comes off as high energy. Oh, man got fired for the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, Afghanistan, where we left billions of dollars of equipment behind. We lost 13 beautiful soldiers and 38 soldiers were obliterated. And by the way, we left people behind, too. We left American citizens behind. When Putin saw that, he said, you know what? I think we're going to go in and maybe take my this was his dream. I talked to him about it, his dream. The difference is he never would have invaded Ukraine, never just like Israel would have never been invaded in a million years by Hamas. You know why? Because Iran was broke with me. I wouldn't let anybody do business with them. They ran out of money. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for anything. No money for terror. That's why you Okay, this is an absurd statement from Donald Trump. We all, everybody, any person who knows anything about foreign policy knows that Donald Trump completely ruined the situation with Iran. And downstream of that the fact that he ruined everything that happened with iran is almost it it, it 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 that the state of the middle east right now the incredible tension and the fact that israel is currently looking to look looking to go to go get involved in further conflict beyond their own uh insanity in gaza all of this is downstream of the fact that donald trump took an action that moved so far away from any sort of stable relations of peace in the Middle East with Iran specifically. He made the decision, the worst decision, the decision that empowered Iran's worst factions the most. So this is total bullshit from Trump. No terror at all during my administration. This place, the whole world- Also great point, Retcon. Retcon says, wait, so Donald, tr so Donald Trump talked to Putin about his dream of invading Ukraine? When? Yeah. That's an interesting question, isn't it? Unfortunately, none of Donald Trump's followers or anybody who is even likely to um, vote for Trump is going to care about that at all. It, it's a real bummer because that's an insane thing to say. This blowing up under him. President Biden. I've never heard so much malarkey in my whole life. Look, the fact that... <laughs> yes! Joe finally got a zinger in! I never heard so much malarkey in my life. Oh, he did it! He managed one! Thank God! In a situation where, let's take the last point first. Iran attacked American troops, kill, uh, caused brain damage for a number of these troops, and he did nothing about it recently, not when he was president. They, they attacked. He said they're just having headaches. That's all it is. He didn't do a thing when the attack took place, number one. Huh? Number two. We got over a hundred thousand Americans, and uh, can, I, I can, can we please for the look, just for the sake of a good show, can Joe Biden get a zinger in and then follow it with a little more energy? This is so bad. The malarkey line, oh, that would have been sick if he'd been able to follow that up with something of energy. But then he's just like, well, now they got headaches, and Trump said it was headaches, but. Actually, it wasn't headaches. It was a brain damage of some sort that was caused by Iranian soldiers and a bombing of some sort. It's like, I'm sorry, huh? What happened to the, where was the malarkey energy? You hit him with the malarkey and then you followed up with your own malarkey. Others out of, of uh, Afghanistan during that airlift. Number three, we found ourselves in a situation where if you take a look at what Trump did in Ukraine, he, this guy told Ukraine, told Trump, do whatever you want and do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Trump did. 
to Putin, encourage him, do whatever you want. And he oh, went in. And listen to what oh, he... Oh, he mixed it up. I think he meant to say Trump said to Putin, do whatever you want, and not the other way around. Oh. He said when he went in, he was going to take Kiev in five days, remember? Because it's part of the old Soviet Union. That's what he wanted to reestablish. Kiev. And he, in oh, fact, didn't do it at all. He didn't, wasn't able to get it done. And they've lost over, they've lost thousands and thousands of troops, 500,000 troops. President Trump, I never come said back to that. You for, for one minute, I just want to go back to my original question, which yeah. is, are Putin's terms acceptable to you? Keeping the territory no, they're not in acceptable. Ukraine. No, they're not acceptable. But look, this is a war that never should have started. If we had a leader in this war, he led everybody along. He's given $200 billion now or more to Ukraine. He's given $200 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. Every time that Zelensky comes to this country, he walks away with $60 billion. He's the greatest salesman ever. And I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking anything. I'm okay, that's, that's, kind of a, uh, that's kind of a crazy thing to say, uh, given everything else. It's... it's of course, once again, nobody cares about hypocrisy, but it's kind of crazy to be like, oh, he keeps giving money to Zelensky when there's the giant what you know, the giant elephant in the room of the amount of money that has been getting shoveled over to Israel. Actually kind of absurd, but unfortunately, uh, unlikely to sway anyone one way or the other because the whole Ukraine thing has become a very dumb partisan issue only saying he's, the money that we're spending on this war and we shouldn't be spending it should have never happened i will have that war settled between putin and Zelensky as president-elect before i take office on january 20th i'll have that war settled people bro yeah right yeah fucking right Yeah, you know, if I was there in World War I, it would have gone differently, you know? Just saying. I'm kind of built different. You know, if I'd been there at the assassination of uh, our Archduke Ferdinand, it would have gone differently. would have gone down totally differently, bro. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. You President know, Biden, you have a minute. The fact is that Putin is a war criminal. He's killed thousands and thousands of people and he has made one thing clear he wants to reestablish what was part of the soviet empire not just a piece he wants all of ukraine that's what he wants and then you think he'll stop there you exactly think he'll stop when he if, he if he takes ukraine what do you think happens to yes dizzy dizzy eyes says did he just take before did he just say he would fix the problem before he even takes office yes he did he claimed that he would solve the russia ukraine conflict before he takes office that's like the most my uncle works at nintendo style claim it's like a child school like schoolyard boast Dere truly deranged and actually a hilarious and laughably deranged claim oh what do you think of Be belarus what do you think happens to those nato countries and so if you want a war you ought to find out what he's going to do because if in fact he does what he says and walks away and by the way all that money we give Ukraine are from weapons we make here in the United States. We give them the weapons, not the money at this point. And, the, and our NATO allies have produced as much funding for Ukraine as we have. That's why, it's, that's why we're strong. Thank you. Moving on to the Middle East. In October, Hamas... A little shaky, but definitely... Even, it's, it's sad that that was one of his best answers of the night and that it won't matter because it's on an issue that the average person doesn't actually really care that much about. Um, like, uh, basically, from an optical perspective, saying we're strong because we're sticking with our allies in NATO, um, that appeals, that, like, that's a good message. But unfortunately, people are not particularly invested in Russia and Ukraine at this particular moment. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's mostly a... Uh, that's mostly like a congressional sticking point for waging inter-Congress warfare as opposed to a major sticking point for the, for the general populace. But, you know, I guess you got to answer it. Hamas attacked Israel. 
killing more than a thousand people and taking hundreds of hostages. Oh Among boy, those held go. and thought to still be alive. Oh boy, here we go, everybody. Five are five Americans. Israel's response has killed thousands of Palestinians and created a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. President Biden, you've put forward a, a proposal to resolve this conflict, but so far Hamas has not released the remaining. Right. Oh my God, that is so. This is so misleading. By the way, this is the t the way in which American media participates in manufacturing consent. Straight up. Also, what the fuck is going on with his expression? Ho why does he look so horrified? I feel like I need to move the gifts temporarily just so you can see just how horrified he looks. Oh my god. It's like, oh, he's like, oh, I was dreading this one. What I was saying is this is how the American media participates in manufacturing consent by being like, oh, yeah, Hamas hasn't accepted the American peace plan uh, when we when when literally it was less than it was just a few weeks ago that there was an accepted and agreed upon peace plan that Hamas had agreed to that Israel just threw in the garbage and undermined immediately. Like this is it's so insane. It's, it's just but again, it's just taken as fact. That's why I call it like the manufacturing consent thing. You're just, because it's coming from the moderator, this information is accepted as fact. And it's pitching to Joe to, Joe to uh, make everybody on the stage is going to basically agree that, oh yeah, what we're doing in supporting Israel is just 100% fine. Oh yeah, you know, what, what a wild way to frame it. The framing of the debate is that nobody actually has to question the relationship with Israel at all. It's just, no, no, it was Hamas, you see. Crazy. Gaining hostages, and Israel is continuing its military offensive in Gaza. So what additional leverage will you use to get Hamas and Israel to end? Hey, Cherry, great to see you. Cherry says, it has never been more over. I'm not going to lie, Joe's showing in this debate so far has been absolutely uh, depressing. It's actually... Quite horrifying just how bad his showing has been so far. Uh, it might it might have never been so more over. The war, you have two minutes. Number one, everyone from the United Nations Security, Security Council straight through to the G7 to the Israelis and Netanyahu himself have endorsed the plan I put forward endorse the plan I put forward, which has three stages to it. The first stage is trade the hostages for a ceasefire. Second phase is a ceasefire with additional conditions. The third phase is no, the end of the war. The only one who wants the war to continue is Hamas, number one. They're insane. Absolutely insane thing to say. Absolutely insane thing to say. Genuinely disgusting. And I just want people to, I just want people to understand, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take off all the silly gifts for a second. The fact that Joe Biden has earned the moniker Genocide Joe, this just proves just how far and how real uh, that moniker, how deserved that moniker is. The fact that he's earned the name Genocide Joe, this is it right here. Actually absurd. You know, it's crazy. I want to just take a moment here. And, I, and again, I'm going to leave the silly gifts off for a second because um, this is a pretty serious issue. But last night, I was listening to a documentarian talk about the uh, documentary that they made um, about the killing um, of a six-year-old uh, in Gaza by the name of Hind. Um, and this six-year-old was... Uh, was killed in a car that was uh that was what it has been completely and utterly documented to the t now israel denies this even happened even though we have recordings of the event even though we have uh um even though we have uh satellite photographs that prove that there was a car that there was both the car was where it was obviously everyone verified that and that there was an israeli tank in the area we have the phone call with the six-year-old and we have the six-year-old's last words 
on a recorded phone call that is available to the public. Her and her family were stuck in the car and riddled with bullets and her family members died one by one while this six-year-old was on the phone with her parents from afar. And in addition to uh, the, uh, in addition to the six-year-old then dying from blood loss after her entire family was killed in front of her in this car, when the uh, Red Crescent attempted to uh, access the area, they got approval from Israel and Israel killed them. Israel blew up the Red Crescent ambulance that went to go rest to try and preserve the remains of these people who were killed. Israel gave approval and then killed them all and has faced no co consequences for that. And Joe Biden is sitting here going, oh yeah, the only people who want the war to go on is Hamas. Uncle Gumball said, I think it was emergency services. Emergency services put her on with her mother. You can actually hear it in the, in the recording. Horrifying. Horrifying. Literally, um, she says, she says she doesn't want to wipe the blood off of her mouth because she doesn't want him to make her mother angry for getting stains on her dress. Those are the last words that she says. Not even kidding you. It's the saddest thing in the fucking world. And this is the stuff that we got Joe Biden out here covering for this. We've got CNN participating in setting the framing of the question as if there's no, no worthy critique of Israel at all. There is no, on this stage, there is no acceptable critique of the monstrosities of the horror that Israel is meeting out on the innocent people of Gaza. So this is the type of thing that makes me so mad about Joe Biden. This is the outrage that people feel and uh, the sickening, depressing, uh, doomer-inducing state of modern politics. If you wonder why there are so many people who struggle with so-called doomerism, it's because this is the state of affairs. It's because you're the, the psychopath Donald Trump is being po uh, uh, you know is being uh, opposed by a guy who has spent the entirety of this year doing the most obscene and unapologetic covering for a horrific and nightmarish mass killing event horrible After talking about something like that, it feels fucking wrong to go back to our silly, silly gift pile. But at the same time, what's the quote? What's the David Lynch? What's the David Lynch quote? That uh, for absurdists, this is the most wonderful time to live. Something along those lines. Let me see if I can get the exact quote. I want to know where that quote is. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. No, let's continue. We knew we knew that we were going to be dealing with the most derangement and at the end of the day, we still must persist. And if we persist with laughter, that's how we do it. The only one standing out, we're still pushing hard from to get them to accept. In the meantime, what's happened? 
in Israel were fine. I said, the only thing I've denied Israel was 2,000 pound bombs. They don't work very well in populated areas. They kill a lot of innocent people. We're providing Israel with all the weapons they need and when they need them. And by the way, I'm the guy that organized the world against Iran when they had a full blown intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile attack on Israel. Here's the quote, quote by David Lynch. What a great time to be alive if you love the theater of the absurd. Well, you're in it. You're in the theater of the absurd. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed and it just stopped. We saved Israel. We are the biggest pr pr producer of support for Israel of anyone in the world. And Jesus Christ. So that's, they're, they're two different things. Again, Mom you all remember, you know that, you remember how I said a couple of weeks ago that Joe Biden is his own biggest stumbling block and that if he loses this election, there will be literally no one on the planet to blame except for Joe Biden. This is case in point. Liberals have been screeching at me for weeks because I dared to say that Joe Biden is responsible for his own fucking failure as the leader of the quote unquote free world. But this right here really nails it out the park. Using the most concentrated platform that, that we've seen so far. Literally, obviously, he's been using the White House, but this is the normie, this is the most normie political event that you're gonna get. The most normies are likely to, okay, normies don't tune in to random White House press statements, okay? They just don't. And a lot of normies are not going to tune in to presidential debates. But more normies than average are going to tune into the presidential debate and they're going to sit here and they're going to hear Joe Biden talking about, oh, you know, we, we give the most money to Israel ever. We're going to, we're going to, we, we, we are unapologetic. We're saving Israel. And in their minds, what they've seen, the entire, what they've seen and heard on social media and beyond about this conflict is that Israel is brutally killing innocent people. You want to know one of the events that is most in the minds of the average person when it comes to this fucking conflict? It's not about how we saved Israel. It's about, it's those stories about people being summarily executed. It's the stories about people having, um, what's a knock on the roof? A thing that Israel does where they politely drop an empty bomb on the roof of your house so that you know how to, so that you know to run away in advance. And they say that that's like a humanitarian measure, even though we know that they just often just in blow up people's houses anyway. Actually wild. They know about the flower massacre. They know about Hind. And you wonder, you wonder why Joe is struggling right now. I took a screenshot um, before stream. Hold on, let me see if I can find it real quick. Let me see if I can find the screenshot because I grabbed us. Yeah, here it is. I took a, a screenshot of the polls that, CN that CBS was showing. Here, hold on. I have to go to this one real quick so you guys can see this. Just so you can see, these were the polls that they were discussing before the debate started. This is, these are, the, these are some of the swing states that Donald Trump, uh, that Trump and Biden are going to have to win over. And I want you to look at this. Biden 49, Trump 51, Trump Biden 50, 50, 50 tied in Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, Arizona 49 to 51. Actually, actually demented that, that Donald Trump, a known and failed quantity who, who is, is now a convicted felon. And Joe Biden is struggling for his life against him. Actually absurd. All right, let's continue. We cannot be allowed to be continued. We continue to send our experts and our intelligence people as to how they can get Hamas. Marissa says, well, calling people normies isn't going to drum up any support for your side either. Well, we're, I'm, a political, I'm a political and gaming streamer. Obviously, the people that watch my show 
are interested in a niche. Most people who are going to take a Thursday night and come roll up to my stream to watch me absurdly cover the politics debate is not going to be your everyday average person level of interest in politics. People who come to my stream have an advanced interest in politics. I'm not saying that as an insult. What I'm saying is that this event, from an exterior perspective, what I'm commentating on to the people who are interested is the fact that this stream, or this debate, is not, is not going to play well for a lot of normies. Now, obviously, um, there are already a lot of everyday folks who are really unhappy with what they've seen from Gaza. Um, but hearing Joe Biden in no, uh, uh, in no uncertain terms declare that he's 100% behind that, it's going to earn him the name Genocide Joe, and people are going to remember that. That's what I'm saying. I know there are... <laughs> Uncle Gumball said, oh, you didn't know your streams are viewed by tens of thousands of independents? I mean, I'm sure there are at least some, but I wouldn't say tens of thousands. But, um, yeah. Uh, also, I think that normies... Uh, 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 are not going to be bothered by being called a normie. They're probably not even going to know what is meant by that. So, yeah, I don't really care. But just figured I'd comment on that because uh, uh, I don't, th I'm not saying that my stream is appealing to normies. It doesn't. I mean, I'm sur sure there are some who would watch my stream and have a good time. Probably my gaming stuff more. But um, I know by making a politics stream or doing politics topics that I'm going to be appealing to people who are specifically interested in politics. This debate, however, the debate itself is going to have higher views. Anyway, like we did Bin Laden. You don't have to do it. And by the way, they've been greatly weakened, Hamas. Greatly weakened, and they should be. They should be eliminated. But you've got to be careful for what using certain weapons among population centers. Just going back to Ukraine for one second. We have an ocean separating us. The European nations together have spent a hundred billion or maybe more than that, less than us. Why doesn't he call them and say, you got to put up your money like I did with NATO? I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. The Secretary General of NATO said Trump did the most incredible job I've ever seen. You wouldn't, they wouldn't have any, they were going out of business. We were spending almost a hundred percent of the money was, was paid by us. Marissa, you should go back to being a DGEN. You'd probably be more fun. Right now, you're kind of a wet blanket, not going to lie, but, you know. He didn't do that. He's getting all... you got to ask these people to put up the money. We're over $100 billion more spent, and it has a bigger impact on them because of location, because we have an ocean in between. you got to ask them, as far as Israel and, and Hamas, Israel's the one that wants to go. He said the only one that wants to keep going is Hamas. Actually, Israel is the one. And you should let him go and let him finish the job. He doesn't want to do it. He's become like a Palestinian, but they don't like him because he's a very bad Palestinian. He's a weak one. President Biden, you have a minute. I've never heard so much foolishness. This is a guy who wants to get out of NATO. Are you going to stay in NATO? He's going to pull out of NATO. The idea that we have... He's making the faces again. He's making the faces. He's bringing back the classics from 2020. He's bringing back the classics from 2016. The the little butthole mouth that he does whenever Hillary Clinton would say something that was a, he'd be like, nasty woman. I don't know, maybe. We have, our strength lies in our alliances as well. It may be a big ocean, but we ever, ever able to avoid a war in, in Europe, a major war in Europe? What happens if, in fact, you have Putin continue to go into, into NATO? We have an Article 5 agreement. Attack on one is attack on all. You want to start the nuclear war he keeps talking about, go ahead. Let Putin go in and control Ukraine and then move on to Poland. Horrible thing to say, by the way. Actually, just terrible way of saying that. You want to start the nuclear war? Go ahead. That's just a terrible way of wording it. I understand his message, and I'm going to be charitable to Joe Biden, but that is like the worst thing that you could possibly say. Just terrible. Terrible wording. In other places, we see what happens then. He has no idea what the hell he's talking about. And by the way, I got 50 other nations around the world to support Ukraine, including Japan and South Korea, because they understand that this was this, this based, kind of Cherry. dislocation. Based, Cherry, based has a serious threat to the whole world peace. 
No, no major war in Europe has ever been able to be contained just to Europe. President Trump, just to follow up, would you support the creation of an independent Palestinian state in order to achieve peace in the region? I'd have to see. But before we do that, the problem we have is that we spend all the money. So they kill us on trade. I made great trade deals with the European nations. Because if you add them up, they're about the same size economically. Their economy is about the same size as the United States. And they were written no cars, no, they don't want anything that we have, but we're supposed to take their cars, their food, their everything, their agriculture. I changed that. But the big thing I changed is they don't want to. Sorry, I just need to just, just, I want to give just a small moment to the YouTube chat right now, okay? There we go. That's it. Let's continue. Pay. And the only reason that he can play games with NATO is because I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. I said, and he's right about this. I said, no, I'm not going to support NATO if you don't pay. They asked me that question. Would you guard us against Russia? Look at how many, look at how many sweet creatures there are jumping and hopping around. There are so many good YouTube imps. There are just a couple of uh, rambunctious upstarts who's, uh, who's, who, who have convinced themselves of some truly interesting things. But among them, despite the, the overshadowing upstarts, there are all these sweet little imps just having a good-ass time. It's so beautiful to see. And to you, I, I grant abundance, okay? To you, I, I send my blessings, okay? To all of you. And to the other rambunctious upstarts, go ahead. Do it. Try it. A very secret meeting of the 28 uh, states at that time, uh, nations at that time. And they said, no, if you don't pay, I won't do that. And you know what happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in the billions. next day and the next months. But now we're in the same position. We're paying everybody's Thank you. bills. Let's turn to the issue of democracy. Uh, former Billions. President Trump, uh, I want to ask you about January 6, 2021. After Whoa. you rallied your supporters that day, some of them stormed the Capitol to stop the constitutionally mandated counting of electoral votes. As president, you swore an oath to, quote, preserve, protect, and defend, unquote, the Constitution. What do you say to voters who believe that you violated that oath through your actions and inaction on January 6th and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I don't think too many believe that. And let me tell you about January 6th. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in, and we're now laughed at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. The, what happened to the United States' reputation under this man's leadership is horrible, including weaponization, which I'm sure at some point you'll be talking about, where he goes after his political opponent because he can't beat him fair and square. You have 80 seconds left. My question was, what do you say to those voters who believe that you violated your constitutional oath through your actions and inaction on January 6, 2021, and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I didn't say that to anybody. I said peacefully and patriotically. And Nancy Pelosi, if you just watched the news from two days ago, Nancy on Pelosi. tape to her daughter, who's a documentary filmmaker, they say, but she's saying, oh, no, it's my responsibility. I was responsible for this because I offered her 10,000 soldiers or National Guard and she turned them down. And the mayor of in writing, by the way, the mayor in writing turned it down. The mayor of, of D.C., they turned it down. I offered 10,000 because I could see I had virtually nothing to do. They asked me to go. Okay, make a so here's the thing. I'm going to just say something right now. Joe Biden needs to nail this. OK. Because what Donald Trump is doing here is he is successfully using a platform to launder his reputation of the insanity of January 6th. He is saying that I, I tried. I did my best. I told them to be good. I even offered them 10,000 soldiers and they turned it down. If Joe Biden doesn't capitalize on this and slam Trump, that's going to affect a lot of people who are like, who already feel like January 6th wasn't that big of a deal. And, and, uh, 
the Dems have done a pretty bad job of selling how big of a deal January 6th is, which it was a big deal. Now, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it wasn't the, uh, the, the, the ultimate coup of ultimate coups. It was a pretty pathetic event, but it was representative of a sentiment among the Trump movement as to how they view democracy. And what happened there was pretty unprecedented in recent history. We've not seen any level of, of uh, a demented uprising quite like that um, in recent memory. So it was a big deal, but Donald Trump right now is basically washing his hands of it. And if Joe doesn't follow up on this, that's gonna be really bad for Joe. Speech. I could see what was happening. Everybody was saying they're going to be there on January 6th. They're going to be there. And I said, you know what? There's a lot of people coming. You could feel it. You could feel it, too. And you could feel it. And I said, by the way, uh, uh, if you want to support this channel, please consider donating. It would mean quite a lot to me. Um, my show is 100% viewer supported. So your views, your donations are what make this channel possible. And for those in chat who are making uh, strange and demented um, and poorly thought out comments about whether or not uh, you're contributing to a Google product, well, there's a great option for you, which is that you can subscribe on my website where all of the money goes to me and none of it goes to Google. So if you would prefer to support me directly, you can come to my website and do that and I would deeply appreciate it. Anyway, let's continue shilling capitalistic membership yes no even better better than capitalistic membership divine membership you are paying tribute to a god who is keeping your mind stable right now you're if if my entertainment wasn't here for you you would be staring at a wall crying scrambling through your web pages and your apps desperately looking for something something to quiet the madness inside so that it doesn't consume you but instead heroically Godlikely, I have stepped down and I hold the monsters in your mind and soul at bay with laughter and joy and sometimes righteous fury. So, if that's not a pitch, what is? Let's continue. How can you be a god? Are you are you a fool? Wait, we know that answer already. Don't even you're you're not even trying anymore. Sit down. Sit, sit down. Are you fucking kidding me? They ought to have some National Guard or whatever. And I offered it to her. And she now admits that she turned it down. And it was the same day she was, I don't know, she can't be very happy with her daughter because it made her into a liar. She said, I take full responsibility for January 6th. President Biden. Look, he encouraged those folks to go up on Capitol Hill, number one. I sat in the dining room off the Oval Office. He sat there for three hours, three hours watching, begging, being begged by his vice president and a number of his colleagues on the Republican side as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead, he talked, they talked about these people being patriots and, and, and great patrons of America. In fact, he says he'll now forgive them for what they've done. He'll, they've been convicted. He says he wants to commute their sentences and say that, that no, but he went to every single court in the nation. I don't know how many cases, scores of cases, including the Supreme Court. And they said, they said, no, no, this guy, this guy is responsible for doing what is being, uh, was done. He did do a damn thing. Oh no, you didn't get rid of the zoo animal, did you? You just deleted messages, right? They're not banned, right? Oh. And these people should be in jail. Okay, five minute timeout. All right, that's fair. That's fair. They'll be back in five minutes. Should be the ones who are being held accountable. And he wants to let them all out. And now he says if he loses again, such a whiner that he is, that it could be a- Hold on, let's hear it. We got to rewind just a tiny bit. And great, three hours watching, 
begging, being begged by his vice president and a number of his colleagues on the Republican side as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead, he talked, they talked about these people being patriots and, and, and great patrons of America. In fact, he says he'll now forgive them for what they've done. He'll, they've been convicted. He says he wants to commute their sentences and say that, that no. But he went to every single court in the nation. I don't know how many cases scores of cases, including the Supreme Court. And they said, they said, no, no, this guy, this guy is responsible for doing what Yes, Renewed Wolf, if you, if you specifically want a gift to come on, you can do a $5 dono and I will put that gift on for you. I can't promise that, uh, that I'm going to make that for everybody, but I'll do my best. Uh, these were cust I, I chose these gifts. These were all picked by me because this was a last minute thing. But if you have a gift you really want on and you want to give me five bucks for it, 100%, I'll do it. What is being that was done? He did do a damn thing, and these people should be in jail, and they should just make sure it's a gift and not a web held accountable. And he wants to let them all out, and now he says if he loses again, such a whiner that he is, that it could be a bloodbath. Thank you, President Biden, President Trump. What they've done to bro. Okay, Joe really rambled it. That was a pretty weak response. It was funny to call him a whiner, but that was a pretty rambly response. And I think Donald Trump is about to knock it out of the park. To some people that are so innocent, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What you have done, how you've destroyed the lives of so many people. When they ripped down Portland, when they ripped down uh, many other cities, you go to Minnesota. Oops! Oh, he slipped up there for a second, but he Minnesota, kept going. Minneapolis, what they've done there with the fires all over the city. If I didn't bring in the National Guard, that city would have been destroyed. When you... <laughs> Okay, insane. Genuinely insane thing to say. This is this is uh, a debate of two people saying the most insane and ridiculous nonsense to one another. It's actually so far been almost exactly as I predicted, with Joe Biden performing slightly worse than I predicted. Remember at the beginning when I said that they were just going to inanely babble at each other and repeat their NPC talking points, and then we were all going to be sad? Remember that at the beginning? Kiwi TP says, any predictions for the debate? I think we're going to see a more disciplined... Tr Do you think we're going to see a more disciplined Trump? I personally doubt it. I extremely doubt it. My prediction that is it going to be low energy uh, grandpa slap fights that they're both basically going to like recite their NPC lines. I don't think it's going to be even a drop as spicy as the uh, Trump versus Hillary debate. Um, the Trump versus Hillary debate was actually fairly entertaining at certain points. Um, it's where we got things like wrong, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, um, my guess is that it's going to be uh, a little bit of a boring watch overall and that I'm going to spice it up by being funny the entire time. You look at all of the, they took over big chunks of Seattle. I was all set to bring in the National Guard. They heard that, they saw them coming and they left immediately. Saying that saying that Portland and Seattle would have been burned to the ground is genuinely deranged. Even in even in the incredibly tiny uh, 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 Chaz Chop uh, incident, uh, nothing got fucking burnt down. Nothing got burnt down at all. Like just it's just insanity. What he said about. This whole subject is so off. Peacefully patriotic. Okay, one that's a thing, great one. The I love this. committee, which is basically Thank you so much, two Renewed horrible Wolf. Republicans that are all gone now out of office, and Democrats, all Democrats, they destroyed and deleted all of the information they found because they found out we were right. We were right. And they deleted and destroyed all of the information. They should go to jail for that. If a Republican did that, they'd go to Thank jail. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, I want to give you a what minute. What is he talking about? The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. And the fact of the matter is, he isn't, he's, what he's telling you is simply not true. The fact is that there was no effort on his part to stop what was going on up in Capitol Hill. And all those people, every one of those who were convicted, deserves to be convicted. The idea that they didn't kill somebody, just went in and broke down doors, broke the windows, uh, occupied offices, turned over desks, turned them over statues. The idea that those people are patriots? Come on. 
when I asked him about the first two debates we had, the debates we had first time around, I said, will you denounce the Proud Boys? He said, no, I'll tell them to stand by. The idea he's refusing to, will, will you denounce these guys? Will you denounce the people we're talking about now? Will you denounce the people who attacked that capital? What are you going to do? I'm going to uh, give you a, a, a minute, President Trump, for a follow-up question I have. Um, after a jury convicted you of 34 felonies last month, you said if reelected, you would, quote, have every right to go after, unquote, your political opponents. You just talked about members of the select committee on January 6th going to jail. Your main political opponent is standing on stage with you tonight. Can you clarify exactly what it means about you feeling you have every right to go after your political opponents? Well, I said my retribution is going to be success. We're going to make this country successful again, because right now it's a failing nation. My retribution is going to be success. But when he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon at a very high level. His son is convicted, going to be convicted probably numerous other times. Should have been convicted before, but his Justice Department let the statute of limitations lapse on the most important things. But he could be a convicted felon as soon as he gets out of office. Joe could be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. He's done horrible things. All of the death caused at the, the border, uh, telling the Ukrainian people oh. that we're going to want a billion dollars or you change the prosecutor. Otherwise, you're not getting a billion dollars. If I ever said that, that's quid pro quo, that we're not going to do anything. We're not going to give you a billion dollars unless you change your prosecutor having to do with the son. This man is a criminal. This man, you're lucky. You're lucky. I did nothing wrong. We'd have a system that was rigged and disgusting. I did nothing wrong. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, I'm coming right to you, sir. You, well, you want to respond? Go ahead. I'll give you a minute to respond. The idea well, hold on a second. How come he, how come they didn't, now this is just kind of weird. Why didn't they just let, they should have made Trump answer when Joe Biden said, I guess it was just because Joe Biden said it so unclearly that like Joe Biden was like, what are you going to say if I tell you to denounce those people who wrecked up the Capitol? And then they just moved to another question. Oh my God. What a mess. Also, thank you, Uncle Gumbald. Your GIF is now on the screen. Oh, boy. All right, let's continue, everybody. Come on, let's keep going. We yeah. got to be strong. That I did anything wrong relative to what you're talking about is outrageous. It's simply a lie, number one. Number two, the idea that you have a right to seek retribution against any American just because you're president is wrong. It's simply wrong. No president's ever spoken like that before. No president in our history has spoken like that before. Number three, the crimes that you are still charged with, and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing no harm? Yes. Uh, well, it was actually sent to me, Paige. It was sent to me. Uh, many people sent gifts, but early on I was being very choosy, and I liked that one, so, yeah. A whole range of things of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant. I mean. What, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official, a DOJ, into the Manhattan DA's office to start that case. That case is going to be appealed and won. We had a very uh, terrible judge, a horrible judge, Democrat. The prosecutor were all high-ranking Democrats, appointed people. And the, both the civil and the criminal. He basically went after his political opponent because he thought it was going to damage me. But when the public found out about these cases, because they understand it better than he does, he has no idea what these cases are. But when, he, the, when they found out about these cases, you know what they did? My poll numbers went up way up. You know that because you're reporting it. And we took in more money in the last two weeks than we've ever taken in in the history of, of any campaign. I don't think any campaign has ever taken. Hundreds of millions of dollars came pouring in because the public knows it's a scam and it's a guy that's after his political opponent because he can't win fair and square. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have... Okay, so uh, again, a bunch of nonsense, same old stuff that we've heard from Trump, it's literally NPC lines. He's repeating the same lines that he does at all of his stupid rally events. Oh, you can't win fair and square. You're a, you know, you're a failed president. You're a fraudulent loser, blah, blah, blah. He, but he's saying it with a lot more energy than Joe. The fact that Donald Trump feel, seems full of energy tonight by comparison to like recently, um, 
it's pretty bad for Biden. Biden responding every time by being like, you don't, you don't fucking know what you're talking about, man. You're you're just and um, uh, the um, uh, uh, and then they have to cut him off. That's bad. That looks fucking bad. Said, quote, Donald Trump and his MAGA Republicans are determined to destroy American democracy. Do you believe that the tens of millions of Americans who are likely to vote for President Trump will be voting against American democracy? The more they know about what he's done, yes. The more they know about what he's done. And there's a lot more coming. He's got a lot of cases down the road coming around. He's got, he's got a whole range of issues he has to face. I don't know what the juries will do, but I do, I do know he has a real problem. And so the fact that, could you ever think you hear any president say that I'm going to seek retribution? Do you ever hear any president say that I thought Hitler had some good ideas? What got me involved to run the first place after my son had died, I decided in Iraq, because of Iraq, I said I wasn't going to run again until I saw what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. People coming out of the woods carrying swastikas on torches, torches, and, and singing the same anti-Semitic bile they sang when back in Germany. And what did, and the young woman got killed. I spoke to the mother and she, they asked him, they said, what, what, what do you think? Okay, you guys aren't enjoying this right now or by what I should say is you're not being tortured by it at the moment, but straight up though, I just need you to understand uh, where is this here? How do I move this? Give me just a second. I'm going to move the gifts for a second just so you guys can see. The nunt is out of control tonight. Actually, like, astral level nunting. I, I can't even believe it. Can you, can you, can we see this here? I, like, Jesus Christ. It is, it is one of the worst it's ever been. We've even got the little, like, the hood going on here. We've got a full ass organ right here. On the plus side, this is probably going to be an educational moment for a lot of his followers who couldn't find the clit no matter what, right? All right, there we go. Let's continue. Look at those people, the people who, the ones who got killed, the one who tried to stop it, and the ones he said, I think they're fine people on both sides. What American president would ever say Nazis coming out of fields, carrying torches, singing the same anti-Semitic bile, carrying swastikas. We're fine people. And this is a guy who says Hitler's done some good things. I'd like to know what they are. The good things Hitler's done, that's what he said. This guy has no sense of American democracy. President Trump. Jake, both of you know that story has been totally wiped out because when you see the sentence, it said, 100% exoneration on this. So he just keeps it going. He says he ran because of Charlottesville. He didn't run because of Charlottesville. He ran because it was his last chance. It, it, he's not equipped to be president. You know it and I know it. It's ridiculous. We have a debate. We're trying to justify his presidency. His presidency is, without question, the worst president, the worst presidency in the history of our country. We shouldn't be having a debate about the it. There's nothing to debate. The history of he our made country, up the man, Charlottesville really. story. And you'll see it's debunked all over the place. Every anchor has, deb every reasonable anchor has debunked it. And just the other day it came out where it was fully debunked. It's a nonsense story. He knows that. And he didn't run because of Charlottesville. He used that as an excuse to run. President Biden. And debunked. It happened. All you have to do is listen to what was said at the time. And the idea that somehow that's the only reason I ran. I ran because I was worried a guy like this guy could get elected. If he thought they were good people coming out of that, all, that forest, carrying those, those woods, carrying those torches, then he didn't deserve to be president. Didn't deserve to be president at all. And the idea that he's talking about all this being fabricated, we saw with our own eyes. We saw what happened on January 6th. We saw the people breaking through the windows. We saw people occupying the... His own vice president, look, there's a reason why 40 of his 44 top cabinet officers refused to endorse him this time. His vice president hasn't endorsed him this time. So why? Why? They know him well. They serve with him. Why are they not endorsing him? Thank you, President. It's a good question, but the delivery was horrible. And also, he seemed to forget what he was talking about there because they were talking about Charlottesville and then they were talking about... Um, you know, the statements that, that Trump made around Charlottesville, and then Joe Biden started talking about January 6th again. Oh, man. 
Oh, Biden, we're going to be right back with more. Thank you, by the way, for to President Sunday and the squids. Thank you very, very much for the raid. Welcome. Come get comfortable. We'd love to have you. We're having a wild time. And by a wild time, I mean we're watching two extremely brain fried old men uh, ramble incoherently uh, with extremely poorly verified statements that may or may not have any ties to reality whatsoever and then we're trying to make the best of it but we'd love to have you please come on in and make sure you press like on the stream on your way in all right here we go everybody we're back presidency black families we're still back everybody look at that time travel another proof of my divinity yes than white families Black mothers are still three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes, and black Americans are imprisoned at five times the rate of white Americans. What do you say to black voters who are disappointed that you haven't made more progress? They acknowledge you made a lot of progress, number one. The fact of the matter is there's more small black businesses that have been started than any time in history. Number two, the wages of black, their black unemployment is the lowest level it's been in a long, long time. Number three, we find it, we find it providing housing for black Americans and dealing with the segregation that exists among these corporate, these corporate operations that collude to keep uh, people out of their houses. And in, in addition to that, we find that the impact of, on the, the choice that black families have to make relative to childcare is incre incredibly difficult. When we did the first major piece of legislation. Oh man. This is so tragic. Not for Joe, but for the rest of us. This is, this is brutal. I made a joke at the beginning of this that I was in my uh, I was in my Saint Trina arc, hence the purple and the purple flowers and everything. But I didn't think that it was going to be this far into my Saint Trina arc, where simply my observation of the debate is causing Joe Biden to fall asleep. Maybe I should maybe I should crank up to the eternal sleep pots. In the past, I was able to reduce black child care costs. I cut them in half, in half. We got to make sure we provide for child care costs. I, I, I truly, though, I do believe that any person who's watching this debate, um, no one is going to walk away feeling like Joe Biden did well in this. Like, um, when it was when it was Trump versus Hillary in 2016, you know. There was like a toss up, you know, and in the pre in the other debates, it was like, OK, he, he got some points in. This is like the worst. This is this is genuinely there is no there has not been the malarkey moment is the only standout moment for Joe. And everything else has given the impression that he is barely present, that he is actively fading away from existence like it's uh, like it's back to the future, you know. And, and uh, Marty McFly starts, like, fading out in real time. It is, it is, whoo, boy. Genuinely, though, like, this, that, that moment there and the one at the beginning where he completely lost his train of thought. I have a lot of sympathy for people struggling when they're doing a live performance. I am a streamer. I sit on here and usually without any script and minimal uh, preparation, depending on the topic, will sort of riff about whatever. But this is the president of the United States who has an entire team, a massive expensive machine of people designed to prep him and make sure that he's ready for this. And he simply can't. And he is wor what's worst of all is that he is falling into all of the stereotypes and concerns that people have about him. Um, the age question with regard to Joe Biden is one of the biggest issues within and without 
the Democratic Party. It is overall one of the most major issues for people when they talk about a lack of confidence in Joe Biden, when they talk about what makes their th them worry about voting for Joe Biden. And this debate has had two major incidents where Joe Biden appeared to have completely lost what he was saying and to struggle desperately to find where he was going with his thoughts. It is just... It is bad. Gotta make sure you it's bad. You... It's really bad for Joe. Like, I don't think that Donald Trump has done phenomenally here at all. He's mostly been rambling his usual talking points, but he has enough energy that the standout moments of this debate are going to be, and, and mark my words, you're going to see this all over social media. It's going to be when Joe Biden was, was falling asleep at the wheel. If I was to go talk to my family members who aren't super politically attached tomorrow, and in fact, I will do this, when I go talk to my family members, I'm going to ask if they heard anything about the debate, and I'd be willing to guarantee that they will have seen the moments when Joe Biden seemed to fall asleep. Okay? It's bad. It's really bad. By those child care protections, you increase economic growth because more people can be in the in the job market. So there's more to be done, considerably more to be done. But we've done a great deal so far, and I'm not letting up, and they know it. You have 49 seconds left. What do you say to black voters who are disappointed with the progress so far? I say I don't blame them for being disappointed. Inflation is still hurting them badly. For example, I provided for the idea that any black family first time home buyer should get a $10,000 tax credit to be able to buy their first home so they can get started. I made sure that we're in a situation where all those black families and the black individuals who provided had to take out student loans that were ballooning, that if they were engaged in nursing, doctor, and any, anything having to do with volunteerism, if they paid their bills for 10 years. Ah, yes, you can, Zadoki. Go ahead. Oh. Oh, no. Ballooning that if they were engaged in nursing, doctor, and any, anything having to do with volunteerism, if they paid their bills for 10 years on their student debt, all the rest is forgiven after 10 years. Millions have benefited from that. And we're going to do a whole lot more for black families. Thank you, President Trump. Oh, this is painful. It is, it is. First of all, I'm sorry, I need to hide chat for a second here. Give me just a second. I need you guys to see this, okay? Look at his expression right now. Hold on, we're gonna hide everything, okay? Look at his expression right now. Wait, where's, where's the transparency? It is painful to watch. It is painful to watch him struggle through this genuinely painful oh my god all right let's try let's try to continue and he caused the inflation he's blaming inflation and he's right it's been very bad he caused the inflation and it's killing black families and hispanic families and just about everybody it's killing people they can't buy groceries anymore they can't you look at the cost of food where it's doubled and tripled and quadrupled they can't live. They're not That's another one that is really important with voters right now. Food costs and inflation are big issues. Uh, and Donald Trump is hitting him really hard on this. Truthful or not, the fact that he's addressing this is really major. And if, and if Joe Biden can't retort strongly, this is going to hurt him. This is going to severely hurt him. All right. Let's go. Living anymore. He caused this inflation. I gave him a country with no, essentially no inflation. It was perfect. It was so good. All he had to do is leave it alone. He destroyed it with his Green New Scam and all of the other, all this that's money that's one. being thrown out the window. He caused inflation. As sure as you're sitting there, the fact is that his big kill on the black people is the millions of people. Whoa, wow, whoa, hold on there. Whoa, this big, what is, what is this, what is going on? What is he saying? I'm sorry, can we hear that again? What? 
He caused inflation. As sure as you're sitting there, the fact is that his big kill on the black people is the millions of people that he's allowed to come in through the border. They're taking black jobs now. And it could be 18, it could be 19, and even 20 million people. They're taking black jobs, and they're taking Hispanic jobs. And you haven't seen it yet, but you're going to see something that's going to be the worst in our history. Thank you. President Biden? Okay. Well, he kind of he kind of he kind of dialed it back there. He brought it back around, but that was a weird one. It, it, tr Trump was uh, Trump was fucking channeling his inner Zoomer there. His big kill. He was really risen him with a big kill, bro. Oh boy, let's go. Inflation. When I became president, you know why? The economy was flat on its back. 15% unemployment. He decimated the economy. Absolutely decimated the economy. That's why there was no inflation at the time. There were no jobs. We provided thousands and millions of jobs for individuals who were involved in communities, including minority communities. We made sure that they have health insurance. We have covered, we've, the ACA has increased. Thank you to Zadoki and Elby for your $5 donations. Your gifts are on the screen now. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. I made sure that there are 8,000. Joe Dax says, vibe check on the debate. I don't have the heart to watch. You should come sit with us and enjoy the theater of absurdism. Uh, the vibe check on the debate itself is abysmal. It's perhaps the worst debate that I've ever seen in my entire life. I have watched so many presidential debates, and I have never seen one this pathetic uh, and sad and this emblematic of the rot at the top of American politics. Uh, the vibe check is abysmal. But in here, in this room, music is pumping. Well, it isn't, but it will be. We're feeling good. My divine aura is protecting you. Our gifts are giving you a comfortable level of dissociation from the madness. So come, come get comfy and stay. Dollars per person in a family to get written off for the health care. But this guy wants to eliminate that. They tried 50 times. He wants to get rid of the ACA again. Music is pumping. Awkward silence. You're correct. But in our souls, it's pumping. And it will be pumping later. And they're going to try again if they win. You find ourselves in a position where the idea that we're not doing any, I put more, we put more police on the street than any administration has. He wants to cut the cops. We're providing for equity, equity and making sure people have a shot to make it. There's a lot going on, but in inflation, he caused it by his tremendous amount feasance in the way he handled the pandemic. Thank you. Another persistent okay. challenge is the climate crisis. 2023 was the hottest year in recorded history and communities across the country are confronting the devastating effects of extreme heat, intensifying wildfires, stronger hurricanes and rising sea levels. Former President Trump, you've vowed to end your opponent's climate initiatives, but will you take any action as president to slow the climate crisis? Well, let me just go back to what he said about the police, how close the police are to him. Almost every police group in the nation from every state is supporting Donald J. Trump. Almost. By the way, remember when, uh, remember when libs uh, were getting super mad at me saying that the police as an institution are uh, dangerous, undemocratic, and fundamentally uh, fascist leaning? There you have it from the horse's mouth. Of course, this is a statistic that I have repeated to people over and over and over again. The fact that police or uh, the police associations, police unions, and police themselves almost overwhelmingly, I mean, truly overwhelmingly, to the maximum level, support Donald Trump. Uh, it's sickening and upsetting, and it should you should remind it should remind people uh, of of just where the police's political sensibilities lie. And uh, what type of people they're likely to be uh, motivated against as an institution on a broad level. When we're talking um, vast majorities of police orgs uh, all across the country, vast majorities of, of police officers themselves expressing extreme sentiments on 
uh, LGBTQ people, on minorities, on uh, uh, immigration. We should know where police, where police in America stand and what their intentions are. Every police group. And what he's done to the black population is horrible, including the fact that for 10 years he called them super predators. We can't, in the 1990s, we can't forget that. Super predators. Oh, I disagree with you, uh, Arlo. I disagree with you, but we'll get into that later. You've, you've made a fundamental error in your calculation, but it's okay. We'll get there. I'll help you. I'll help you see the future. It was his name, and he called it to him, for ten, and they've taken great offense at it, and now they see it happening. But when they see what I did for criminal justice reform and for the historically black uh, colleges and universities where I funded them and got them all funded, and the uh, Opportunity Zones with with Tim, as you know, Tim Scott was incredible. He did a great job, great senator from South Carolina. He came to me with the idea, and it was a great idea. It's one of the most successful economic development acts ever in the country, Opportunity Zones. And the biggest beneficiary are blacks. And that's why we have the best numbers with them in maybe ever. They're saying ever. I read this morning where ever, the best numbers. He's lost much of the black population because he's done a horrible job for black people. He's also done a horrible job for Hispanics. But wait till you see these millions of people pouring into our country and they're gonna take the jobs and it's already started and you haven't seen anything yet. It's a disaster. You have 38 seconds left, President Trump. Will you take any action as president to slow the climate crisis? So I want absolutely immaculate clean water and I want absolutely clean air and we had it. We had H2O. We had the best numbers ever. And we did. We, we had H2O. Now, we don't got H2O. We had it. We had H2O. Now, it's just H2. No O's. No O's. Sad. Truly sad. We were using all forms of energy, all forms, everything. And yet, during my four years, I had the best environmental numbers ever. And my top environmental people gave me that statistic just before I walked on the stage, actually. I don't know where the hell he's been. The idea that anything he said is true. <laughs> I passed the most extensive, most extensive climate change legislation in history, in history. We find ourselves, and by the way, black colleges, I, I came up with $15 billion for HBCUs, historic black universities and colleges, because they don't have those, they don't have the kind of contributors that they have to build these laboratories and the like. Any black student is capable in college of doing any white student can do. They just have the money, but now they'll be able to get those jobs in high tech. We're in a situation where the idea that he is claiming to have done something that had the cleanest water, the cleanest water, he hadn't done a damn thing for the environment. He pulled out of the Paris Peace Accord, uh, Climate Accord. I immediately joined it because if we reach 1.5 degrees Celsius at any one point, where there's no way back. The only existential threat to humanity is climate change. And he didn't do a damn thing about it. He wants to undo all that I've done. The Paris Accord was going to cost us a trillion dollars and China nothing and Russia nothing and India nothing. It was a ripoff of the United States. Oh, my and God. Oh, my God. And I ended it because I didn't want to waste that money because they treat us horribly. We were the only ones. It was costing us money. Nobody else was paying into it. And it was a, it was a disaster. But everything that he said just now, I'll give you an example. I heard him say before, insulin. I'm the one that got the insulin down for the seniors. I took care of the seniors. What he's doing is destroying all of our medical programs because the migrants coming in, they want everybody. What? And look, I have, the, I have the biggest heart on the stage, I guarantee you that. And I want to take care of people. But we're destroying our country. They're taking over our schools, our hospitals, and they're going to be taking over Social Security. He is destroying Social Security. Kiwi TP says, Dima Mama said it right. This, was the, this is such a great show of the absolute rot of our politics. Yes, this is a pillar an emblem of American political decay. Medicare that and Medicaid. Yep. Thank you. The idea is that we, in fact, we were the only ones of consequence who were not, were not members of, of the Paris Accord.
How can we do anything if we're not able to, the United States can't get its pollution under control? One of the largest polluters in the world, number one. We're making significant progress. By 2035, we will have cut pollution in half. We have made, we have made significant progress, and we're continuing to make progress. We set up a climate core for thousands of young people to learn how to. Renewed Wolf, don't black pill. This should not let you black, this should not, this has changed nothing, okay? Let me just be 100% for a moment, okay? This hasn't changed anything about our political analysis except to show that Joe Biden is once again his own worst enemy and that the Democratic Party uh, just completely fails to meaningfully check the Republicans. But we knew that already. We already knew that. As for what we all gotta do, we gotta keep our, we gotta keep our spirit strong. We must bolster our souls and we must bolster our communities. We must build up our connections, make them stronger so that we can be resilient regardless of whether or not it's uh, Genocide Joe or the absolute psycho freak Donald Trump, which we've already had to deal with once. If we keep building and we keep making each other stronger, we can endure any of this nonsense. It's not like uh, us watching this is for our own information so that we can keep a scope on the horizon so we can know what type of things we're going to be contending with and what things we should be, uh, you know, calculating for. The only thing this changes is that we know that Joe dropped the ball again. Uh, other than that, our what we all have to do is the same. We need to continue thriving. We need to continue helping each other. We need to continue growing our connections to one another, strengthening them, making it so that we can take care of ourselves and one another. No matter who uh, of these decroted uh, geriatrics is in charge. That's what we have to do. And that hasn't changed at all because of this debate. So don't let this black pill you. This is sad and depressing, but it's also just the mask coming off further and further of American politics. We know that American politics at the highest level is a load of garbage. We know that it is deeply undemocratic. We know that it's completely, completely compromised by corporate interests. This is something that we have been screaming about and yelling about since long before I even started streaming. What we have to do is we have to find a way to burgeon our spirits, to become stronger together, and also to stay informed without losing our minds. That's it. I, Retcon, I'm going to go one further. I'm going to say they should have the candidates' top donors d fight each other in a gladiatorial arena. That's, that's how we actually decide. No substitutions. It's got to be the donors themselves. That's the real way we got to do it. I'm sorry, I don't actually care if decroted isn't a real word. It's a real word to me, and everyone knows exactly what it means. It was used by Strongbad, and also by the premier live streamer of the moment, the heir to the throne of the greatest streamer on the platform, Northern Lion. So that means that it's real. I very much believe in being able to make up good words that actually make sense. And if decroted doesn't make sense, then none of our words make sense, okay? That's what I have to say to you today, okay? If, 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 if there's fucking, if there's no decrosion out there, there's no nothing out there. Fact, yes, exactly, Chariot. Fact checked by real demonic patriots. Deal with, I'm just like the Peace Corps, and we're going to... We're moving in directions that are going to significantly change the elements of cause of pollution. But the idea that he claims that he has the biggest heart up here and he's really concerned about, about pollution and about climate, 
I've not seen any indication of that. And by the way, with regard to prescription drugs, one company agreed that they would reduce the price to $35, which I was calling for, one, voluntarily. I made sure every company in the world, every pharmaceutical company, cannot have to Thank pay. Thank you. And by the way. So every day, millions of Americans struggle just to make ends meet. For many older Americans, Social Security provides a critical lifeline. President Biden, if nothing is done to Social Security, seniors will see their benefits cut in just over 10 years. Will you name tonight one specific step that you're willing to take to keep Social Security? Okay, I gotta be real. This is probably the most ageist thing I'm gonna say all night. But why does Joe Biden, why is Joe Biden constantly giving the Mitch McConnell, I can see the Grim Reaper floating over your shoulder face? It's, uh, it's kind of a lot. At every time we've paused, he, it's been like there is like, like, like Wolnir, the, the skeleton from the, from the, the, uh, catacombs of Carthus is reaching up out of the shadows somewhere in the distance. It's crazy. He's got a fucking, he's got a kid, he's got a chill. We need a Wolnir. Somebody donate me a Wolnir gif. I'm asking you. Gift, donate me a Wolnir gif so I can put it on so it actually, we can put it right we can actually put it like right over here so that whenever we see his face, we can see what he's actually seeing. Security solvent. Yes, make the very wealthy begin to pay their fair share. Right now, everybody making under $170,000 pays 6% of their income, of their paycheck, every single time they get a paycheck from the time of the first one they get when they're 18 years old. The idea that they're gonna, I'm not, I've been proposing that Everybody, they pay, the millionaires pay 1%, 1%. So no one after, uh, I would not raise the cost of Social Security for anybody under $400,000. After that, I began to make the wealthy begin to pay their fair share by increasing from 1% beyond to be able to guarantee the program for life. So you still have 82 seconds left. Are there any other measures that you think that would be able to help uh, keep Social Security solvent, or is just is that one enough? Well, no, that, that one enough will keep it solvent, but the biggest thing I'll do is if we defeat this man because he wants to get rid of Social Security. He thinks there's plenty to cut in Social Security. He's wanted to cut Social Security and Medicare both times. And, that's what, and if you look at the, pro, the program put forward by the House Republican Caucus that he, I believe, supports is, in fact, want to cut it as well. The idea that we don't need to protect our seniors is ridiculous. We put, we, and by the way, the American public has greater health care coverage today than ever before. And on the ACA, as I said, you're in a circumstance where 400,000 people, four, I mean 40, 40 million people, would not have insurance because they have a pre-existing condition. Only thing that allows them to have that insurance is the fact that they, in fact, are part of the ACA. And by the way, the other thing is, we're in a situation where I talk about education for black communities. I've raised the number, the amount of money for Pell Grants, another $8,000. So anybody making under $70,000 a year is going to be able to get $15,000. Joe Dax says, I feel like an audience for this debate would be disruptive. I would go 50-50 on whether an audience for this debate uh, would become disruptive because they're so bored that they start like flicking things at each other like they're like doing spitballs or or making those little paper footballs and flicking them at each other or if we just get to hear people like snore and then wake themselves up with a loud fart because I feel like that's like I feel like it's 50 50 as to which one of those events would happen yeah I don't know this is this is rough Easily the, you, you all remember when we covered the January 6th stuff in, in Congress, that boring ass shit was more exciting than this by like a long shot. You remember when I put on the, uh, anybody remember old school demon mama heads? Remember when I put on a, uh, a big pink bear, bear mascot head and I was making fun of Nancy Pelosi and talking about January 6th with a goddamn pink mascot head on. Anybody remember that? And this, that was more exciting than this. I, I had to do less work that day to make it entertaining than what I'm doing today.
And I put on a mascot head. I'm fighting for my life out here. For you all. My, my heart rate is at a dangerously low level. I am riding the line of a personal blackout. And it is only my will and the strength of my spirit that's carrying us forward. You're not going to beat the furry allegations? What allegations? I'm already, I'm already, I'm already convicted. I did everything right. And still they indicted me. Worth your tuition. It's, uh, I, he, he just doesn't know what he's talking about. Thank you, President Biden. President Trump. So I've dealt with politicians all my life. I've been on this side of the equation for the last eight years. Uh, I've never seen anybody lie like this guy. He lies. I've never seen it. He could look you in the face so, about so many other things, too. And we mentioned the laptop. We mentioned Russia, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. If everything he does is a lie. It's misinformation and disinformation. Uh, the losers and suckers story that he made up is a total lie on the military. It's a disgrace. But Social Security, he's destroying it because millions of people are pouring into our country and they're putting them onto oh Social God, Security. They're putting again. them onto Medicare. We're looping! We're looping like the dementia clock on, on the head. We're looping. Oh, we're trapped in a time loop. Help. They're Medicaid. They're putting them in our hospitals. They're taking the place Let of me our out. citizens. They're, what they're doing to the VA, to our veterans, is unbelievable. Our veterans are living in the street, and these people are living in luxury hotels. He doesn't know what he's doing. And it, it's really coming back. I've never seen such anger in our country before. President Biden? The idea that veterans are not being taken care of, I told you before. And by the way, when I said suckers and losers, he said he acknowledged after that he fired that general. That general got fired because he's the one that acknowledged that that's what he said. He was the one standing with Trump when he said it, number one. Number two, the idea that we're going to be in a situation where all these millions and millions, the way he talks about it, Illegal aliens are coming into the country and taking away our jobs. There's a reason why we have the fastest growing economy in the world. The reason why we have the most successful economy in the world. And Tony Bastard, thank you so much. I will absolutely add this to the pile. Although it's not a GIF, but still. Oh no! I'll still add it. Thank you very, very much. Let's continue. We're doing better than any other nation in the world. And by the way, those 15 Nobel laureates he talked about being phony, those 15 Nobel laureates, economists, they all said that if Trump is reelected, we're likely to have a recession and, and inflation is going to increase and go up. And by the way, worst president in history, 159 presidential scholars voted him the worst president in the history of the United States of America. President Biden, thank you so much. Let's turn to the cost of child care, which many American families struggle to afford. President Trump, both you and President Biden have tried to address this issue, but the average cost of child care in this country has risen to more than $11,000 a year per child. For many families, the cost of child care for two children is more than their rent. In your second term, what would you do to make child care more affordable? Just to go back, the general got fired because he was no good. And if he said that, that's why he made it up. But we have 19 people that said I didn't say it, and they're very highly respected, much more so than him. Hold on. We need a check. Okay, everybody? We need a Joe Biden expression check. Can we get a Joe Biden expression check? It's happening again. It's happening again. Holy shit. Every time. He's got the most fearful look on his face at every moment. Jesus Christ. Now, I'll note that both of them are dodging every question and waffling about, but, um, my God. The other thing is, he doesn't fire people. 
He never fired people. I've never seen him fire anybody. I did fire a lot. I fired Comey because he was no good. I fired a lot of the top people at the FBI, drained the swamp. They were no good. Not easy to fire people. You'd pay a price for it, but they were no good. I inherited these people. I didn't put them there. I didn't put Comey there. He was no good. I fired him. This guy hasn't fired anybody. He never fires. He should have fired every military man that was involved with that Afghan, the Afghanistan uh, horror show the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. He didn't fire. Did you fire anybody? Did you fire anybody that's on the border that's allowed us to have the worst border in the history of the world? Did anybody get fired for allowing 18 million people, many from prisons, many from, from mental institutions? Did you fire anybody that allowed our country to be destroyed? Joe, our country is being destroyed as you and I sit up here and waste a lot of time on this debate. This shouldn't be a debate. He is the worst president. He just said it about me because I said it. Uh, but look, he's the worst president in the history of our country. He's destroyed our country. Now, all of a sudden, he's trying to get a little tough on the border. He come out, came out with a, a, nothing, a nothing deal, and it reduced it a little bit, a little bit, like this much. It's insignificant. He wants open borders. He wants our country to either be destroyed or he wants to pick up those people as voters. Right here, by the way, is just proof that, that nothing that the Democrats do, any time the Democrats try to pitch right of Donald Trump, it gets them nothing. They are literally being tricked into implementing their opponent's political ideals and they get nothing for it. Donald Trump is like, this is a, a total waste. Your plan is a failure. When Joe Biden was just in this debate advertising that he went harder on the border than the right wingers wanted. And Donald Trump says, you want open borders. It means nothing. Attempting to appease the right will not work. Democrats trying to appease right wingers is the stupidest tactic that you could possibly employ. And this is exactly what they get for it. Just unbelievable. And I don't think we just can't let it happen. If he wins this election, our country doesn't have a chance, not even a chance of coming out of this rut. We probably won't have a country left anymore. That's how bad it is. He is the worst in history by far. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden. We are the most admired country in the world. We're the United States of America. There's nothing beyond our capacity. We have the finest military in the history of the world, the finest in the history of the world. No one thinks we're weak. No one wants to screw around with us. Nobody. Number one. Number two, the idea that we're talking about worst presidents. I wasn't joking. Look it up. Go online. 159 or 58, don't hold me the exact number, uh, presidential historians, they've had meetings and they voted who's the worst president in American history, one through best to worst. They said he was the worst in all of American history. That's a fact. That's not a, that's not conjecture. He can argue the wrong, but that's what they voted. The idea that he is knowing doing anything to deal with child care. He did very for virtually nothing to child care. We should significantly increase the child care tax credit. We should significantly increase the availability of women and men or single parents to be able to go back to work and we should encourage businesses to hold to have thank you president biden facilities. president trump the question was about what would you do to make child care more affordable if you want to take your minute uh, just so you understand we have polling we have other things that do they rate him the worst because what he's done is so bad mkj moon thank you very very you, much i will show you and they rate me one of the best okay and if I'm given another four years, I will be the best. I think I'll be the best. Nobody's ever created an economy like us. Nobody ever go. cut taxes like us. He's the only one I know. He wants to raise your taxes well, by four times. He wants to raise everybody's taxes by four times. He wants. Now we can see what Joe's looking at every time right here. I got to make it bigger. I wish I could make it as big as possible. Look at that. There's Joe Biden right now. Man is motherfucking cooked. Give me my wool near. Thank you, MKJ Moon. And also, fake-ass twat, thank you so much! I'm gonna get yours up there, too. Thank you very, very, very much. Let's continue.
to Trump tax cuts to expire. So everybody, including the two of you, are going to pay four to five times. Nobody ever heard of this before. All my life, I'd grow up and I'd see politicians talking about cutting taxes. When we cut taxes, as I said, we did more business. Apple and all these companies, they were bringing money back into our country. The worst president in history by far, and everybody knows it. President Biden. Look, the fact of the matter is that he's dead wrong about he's increased the tariff. He's increased. He will increase the uh, taxes on middle class people. I said I'd never raise the tax on anybody making less than four hundred thousand dollars. I didn't. But this tariff is 10 percent tariffs. Everything coming into the country. You know what the economists say? That's going to cost the average American two thousand five hundred dollars a year more because they're going to have to pay the difference in food and all the things that were imported. Number two, he's in a situation where he talks about how he has not raised, he's, he's, he's somehow helped the middle class. The middle class has been devastated by you. Now you want a new tax cut of $5 trillion over the next 10 years, which is going to fundamentally bankrupt the country. You had the largest deficit of any president in American history, number one. Number two, you have not, in fact, made any contact, any 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 progress with China. Did we have a little hiccup? I'm very sorry about that. I'm sorry about the small hiccup. We should be clear now. Sorry about that, everybody. Refresh stream. There we go. Let's continue, everybody. Let's continue. We'll rewind just a tiny bit for what everybody missed. Let's go. Let's rewind just a tiny, tiny bit. Here we go. President Biden. Look, the fact of the matter is that he's dead wrong about he's increased the tariff. He's increased. He will increase the uh, taxes on middle class people. I said I'd never raise the tax on anybody making less than four hundred thousand dollars. I didn't. But this tariff is 10 percent tariffs. Everything coming into the country. You know what the economists say? That's going to cost the average American two thousand five hundred dollars a year more because they're going to have to pay the difference Damn, in bro. food and all the things that were imported. Number two, he's in a situation where he talks about how he has not raised, he's, he's, he's somehow helped the middle class. The middle class has been devastated by you. Now you want a new tax cut of $5 trillion over the next 10 years, which is going to fundamentally bankrupt the country. You had the largest deficit of any president in American history, number one. Number two, you have not, in fact, made any contact, any, any, any progress with China. We are at a lowest trade deficit with China since 2010. Thank you, you President Biden. You lost Thank you, President Biden. Let's, let's discuss an epidemic impacting millions of Americans that both of you have made a top priority in your first term, the opioid crisis. And for both of you, uh, the number oh boy, of overdose deaths in this country has gone up. Under your term, it went up. Under your term, it has gone up. Uh, former President Trump, despite the efforts that both of you have made. All right, everybody, let's get back to business. We got a debate to continue through. Let's do it. More than 100,000 Americans are dying from overdoses every year, primarily from fentanyl and other opioids. What will you do to help Americans right now in the throes of addiction who are struggling to get the treatment they need? To finish up. We now have the largest deficit in the history of our country under this guy. We have the largest deficit with China. Can we get a Joe Biden expression check? That's right. We got a Joe Biden expression check coming in hot. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Is both afraid and lost at this particular moment. He's like. I don't understand. I keep looking around and all I see are skeletons, Jack. Skeletons, as far as the eye can see. It's just kind of weirding me out, you know? Feels like a bunch of bony malarkey. All right. Let's get back to it. He gets paid by China. He's a Manchurian candidate. He gets money from China. We have, so I think he's afraid to deal with them or something. But do you notice he never took out my tariffs because we bring in so much money. Uh, that was me, P Page Punk Corpse. I picked that one personally from my stash. Money with the tariffs that I imposed on China. He never took them away. He can't because it's too much. What's the Vaporeon doing? The Vaporeon is. 
The Vaporeon is riding on a merry-go-round. It's that easy. Just enjoying a merry-go-round. That's it. Money. It's tremendous. And we saved our steel industries. I'm sorry. Hold on. Never took them away. Can't because it's too much money. It's tremendous. I'm sorry. In China. Can we, can we listen closely? I'm going to enhance for a second. We're going to enhance. I'm enhancing the audio. I need you to hear. I believe we got a squirt. I, one of them just had a bowel release. He never took them away. Can't because it's too much money. It's tremendous. Imposed on China. He took out my tariffs because we bring in so much money with the tariffs that I imposed on China. He never took them away. Can't because it's too much money. It's tremendous. And we saved. It's the first one of the night. I'm actually impressed that they both lasted that long. Genuinely, I'm, I'm kind of impressed they lasted that long. That was not a poot, okay? Kiwi TP, that was a, that was a squash. I called it a squirt at first, but upon, re upon reflection and reanalysis, I think that's more like a squash or a squelch. Both of which are very concerning noises, okay? All right. Trump's mic was on, so it had to be him. Well, it could have been it, it could have been somebody else, but I'm going to guess it was probably Trump. He, he's exerting himself right now, whereas Joe seems to have settled into like a stony expression over here. Actually, hey, first time of the night that Joe Biden, just to show you I'm in good faith, first time of the night that Joe Biden doesn't look terrified out of his mind. This is the first time we've seen him. Jason Kelly said, did someone fart? I didn't hear one. Uh, it was more like a, it was more like a, a, a squash or a squelch. Yeah. Which that could be. You're right. Maybe he's relaxed now because that was Joe. Well, the world will never know. Comrade Girl says, all the good gifts I can find are web peas. Just use a converter before you send it to me. Otherwise, I have to convert it. I've had to convert a few tonight and it's very frustrating. So just, there's a bunch of free converters on the internet. If you could, if you could convert it before you send it to me, that'd be great. I know it's very frustrating. Right now, everything uses WebP and WebP doesn't play well with OBS as far as easily adding them. As I understand it, you can add WebPs. It's just very annoying to do so. Anyway, let's continue. Our steel industries and there was more to come, but he hasn't done that. But he hasn't cut the tariffs because he can't, because it's too much money. But he's got the largest deficit in the history of our country, and he's got the worst, the worst situation with China. China is going to own us if you keep allowing them to do what they're doing to us as a country. They are killing us as a country, Joe, and you can't let that happen. You're destroying our country. So, President Trump, you have 67 seconds left. The question was, what are you going to do to help Americans in the throes of addiction right now who are struggling to get the treatment they need? Jake, we were doing very well at addiction until the COVID came along. We had the two and a half, almost three years of like nobody's ever had before any country in every way. And then we had to get tough. And it was the drugs pouring across the border were it started to increase. We got great equipment. We bought the certain dog. That's the most incredible You're thing amazing. that you've ever seen, the way they can spot. We bought the certain dog? No, wait, can you come in here for a second? Oh. Amazing the onion tweet. How good? Is it good enough? Dana Bash reminds Biden he has 40 seconds of life remaining. Oh! Oof! All right, let's continue. It. We did a lot, and we had we were getting very low numbers, very, very low numbers. Then he came along. The numbers, have you seen the numbers now? It's not only the 18 million people that I believe is even low, because they, the gotaways, they don't even talk about gotaways. But the numbers of the, the amount of drugs and human trafficking in women coming across our border, the worst thing I've ever seen, at numbers that nobody's ever seen under him, because the border's so bad, but the, the number of drugs coming across our border now is, is the largest we've ever had by far. President Trump, thank you. So he completely failed to answer the question yet again. 
Classic Trump stuff. Literally doesn't give a shit about the question. Just repeats his damn talking points. Wow. Joe Biden is back to a terrifying expression once again. We've got the Joe Biden terrified look back. Incredible. Um, also, I just want to address a, a comment from chat. Fortnite says, I don't know. I don't want to deal with Democrats blaming Bernie for Trump winning. I hate to tell you this, but they're already going to do that. They are literally going to blame. If Joe Biden loses this, the Democrats are going to try and, and, and ru ruin the lives of anybody they perceive as left of Donald Trump, okay? I want you to understand that. They only know how to take the wrong conclusions from things, and they cannot accept defeat. It will be open season on, on being deranged to lefties. The culture online is going to get even worse, and the Hitler particles flying off of liberals are going to reach a new maximum. So I hope you have your uh, I hope you have your Hitler particle detectors, the volume turned down just a little bit because that thing is going to be blaring after this election. Comrade girl with the ten dollars, thank you so much. I'll get this right on there. Thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you all for being so generous. Seriously, it means a lot to me. This has actually been. Oh my god, this is so cute! Oh, this is a great gif! Oh my god! That one's extra cute! Oh my god! Metal Gear Solid! So cute! I love it. It's gonna go right here. Right here. Perfect. Oh my God, what a good one. Thank you so much for the unbelievably generous donation. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, comrade girl. Let's continue. President Biden. Fentanyl and the byproducts of fentanyl went down for a while. And I wanted to make sure we use the machinery that can detect fentanyl, these big machines that roll over everything that comes across the border. And it costs a lot of money. That was part of this deal we put together, this bipartisan deal. More fentanyl machines, more, more be able to detect drugs, more, more numbers of, of agents, more numbers of all the people at the border. And when we had that deal done, he, went, he called his Republican colleagues and said, don't do it. It's going to hurt me politically. No, he never argued it's not a good bill. It's a really good bill. We need those machines. We need those machines. And we're coming down very hard in every country in Asia in terms of precursors for fentanyl. And Mexico is working with us to make sure they don't have the technology to be able to put it together. That's what we have to do. We need those machines. Thank you, President Biden. Uh, President Trump, and again, the question is about Americans in the throes of addiction right now struggling to get the treatment they need. Well, this, because this does pertain to it. He ended Remain in Mexico. He ended catch and release. I made it catch and release in Mexico, not catch and release here. We had so many things that we had done, hard negotiations with Mexico, and I got it all for nothing. It's just like when you have a hostage, we always pay $6 billion for a hostage. Every time we say it's a hostage. Now we have a hostage, a Wall Street ah. Journal reporter, I think a good guy, and he's over there because Putin is laughing at this guy, probably asking for billions of dollars for the reporter. I will have him out very quickly. As soon as I take office, before I take office, I said. Basically, Donald Trump right now is saying that he will do the steam summer sale, but for hostages. That's crazy, dude. I have coupons sitting all over my house. 50% off, they say. 50% 50, 50 off on American hostages. Joe, he doesn't use them. Too stupid, forgets his coupons. Pays too much. Can't put a price on human life, they say. Well, I say you can, and it's 50% off. Buy one, get one! By literally, as soon as I win the election, I will have that reporter out. He should have had him out a long time ago. But Putin's probably asking for billions and billions of dollars because this guy pays it every time. We had two cases. We paid $6 billion for five people. I got 58 people out, and I paid essentially nothing. Thank you, President Trump. Dana? Let's turn to concerns that voters have about each of you. President Biden, you would be 86 at oh boy, the end here we go. of your second term. How do you address concerns 
about your capability to handle the toughest job in the world well into your 80s? Well, first of all, I spent half my career being, being criticized as being the youngest person in politics. I was the second youngest person ever elected to the United States Senate, and now I'm the oldest. This guy's three years younger and a lot less competent. I think that just look at the record, look at what I've done, look how I've turned around the horrible situation he left me. As I said, doesn't come off very well with the rest of tonight. I got to be completely honest with him. He didn't sell it tonight. He needed to sell it tonight. Tonight was the night to sell it. All of the rest doesn't really matter that much. This is the first presidential debate. This is the one that most people are going to tune into. This is where people are most going to be looking to see, can he actually hold up? And he proved he can't. He really can't. 15 million new jobs, 800,000 manufacturing jobs, more investment in America, over million, billions of dollars in private investment in, uh, in, in enterprises that we are growing. We've, by the way, we brought off a lot of people, well, uh, the whole idea of computer chips. We used to have 40% of the market. We invented those chips and we lost it because he was sending people to, cheap, to find the cheapest jobs overseas and to bring home a product. So I went, I went to South Korea. I convinced Samsung to invest billions of dollars here in the United States. And they're, guess what? Those fabs, they call them, that to, 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 to build these chips, those fabs pay over. And Deepa Pyro, thank you so much for the $5 donation. We'll get this right up on there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. $100,000. You don't need a college degree for them. And there's billions about $40 billion already being invested and being built right now in the United States, creating significant jobs for Americans all over the, from all over the world. President Biden, oh, you no. have 40 seconds. Oh no, this is an MP4. This isn't a GIF. This isn't a GIF. Antifa Pyro, you gotta upload it as a GIF. You gotta convert it beforehand. I'll, I'll put yours on, but I gotta get it in GIF format. So don't, you don't gotta just submit it normally in chat once you get it in GIF format. I can't do the, the MP4, sorry about that. Seconds left, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I would. The, the idea that somehow we are uh, this failing country. I never heard a president talk like this before. We, we're the envy of the world. Like, name me a single major country president who wouldn't trade places with the United States of America for all our problems and all our opportunities. We're the most progressive country in the world in getting things done. We're the strongest country in the world. We're a country in the world who keeps our word and everybody trusts us, okay, all of our bro. allies and our, and our op and our. Uh, this is just typical, uh, you know, you have to say this if you're president thing. He is right that there's like, it's very weird to have a president who's basically like, this place is a shithole. Uh, it's a giant shithole, I hate it, but if you elect me, it won't be a shithole anymore, you know? But it's totally a shithole. The moment I'm out of office, it's just a giant shithole. You don't see that very often. Hey! Welcome! Welcome! To all of the VGG folks, thank you so much for the raid. We're wonderfully happy to have you. Please consider coming over to my website, demonmama.com forward slash live. We would love to have you. You'll recognize it as a very comfortable chatting location, very similar to your own. Uh, really happy to have you. We are having a lot of fun. As you can see, we are doing a maximalism stream, which is our wonderful and beautiful and deeply transformative, arguably divine way of having fun in this nightmare of a debate. Truly a <laughs> painful... Truly a painful debate. Chainsaw, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much, Chainsaw. Seriously. That's really kind of you. Hey, there we go. We got another GIF. If you'd like your GIF on the stream, by the way, we are taking donations for GIFs. A $5 donation. And you can have your GIF up on the screen. Why the hell did this one not work? What the hell? I'm sorry, but that one's still, it's still showing weird. It's downloading as an MP4 still. Oh no, there it goes. Okay, we got it, we got it. We got it, everybody. We solved it. It's gotta be a GIF, no WebPs, no none of that. You gotta send me a GIF. 
But if you send me a GIF and a donation, I'll put it up here. And it can join the gigantic nightmare pile of beautiful things. This work of art that we're making together to make the most of a bad time. Because let's be real, it's been a rough night. It's been a real rough one. Hey, look at all the people signing up. Look at it. Welcome. See the beauty, the wonder. You too can bask in this glory. Thank you so much. Welcome to Mutt Bites. Welcome to Pro Newbie. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Hit the Mat. My goodness. So much kindness. Zach Fletcher says, got to go to bed early. Looking forward to your Shadow of the Erd Tree commentary. Oh, it's going to be hot. Thank you so much, Zach Fletcher. For all of those who are just coming in, we are going to finish this debate together. And then we are going to settle in and I am going to talk about uh, the Elden Ring DLC to a great extent. I am extremely passionate about it. And I have a feeling you'll enjoy it even if you're not a uh, FromSoft fan. I'm going to be talking about the game itself. I'm going to be talking about the controversy around it. And I'm going to be giving people tips on how to do to beat it basically, because I've, I am a bad, I am a bad gamer turned good at things like Elden Ring. And I feel like I can offer some help. Anyway, thank you all so very much. And, uh, let's get, uh, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it, shall we? Saitoria, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll get yours right up on the screen. And Nerodia, I'll get yours up on the screen. Wow, people are being so generous. This show is viewer supported. So your likes and donations mean the world to me. We're going to have a discussion about the debate at the end too. So, Hey, Vinny Havoc, welcome. So many new viewers. So many new people coming onto the site. Oh my God, y'all are making me feel wonderful. What the hell? Oh my God, that one's violent. Nerodia, you went ham. We'll get it on there, though. I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid even a little bit. Let's get going. Those who he coddles up to from Kim Jong-un, he sends love letters to him, Putin, etc. They don't want to screw around with us. Thank you. Uh, former President Trump, to follow up, you would be 82 at the end of your second term. What do you say to voters who have concerns about your capabilities to serve? Well, I took two tests, cognitive tests. I aced them. Both of them, as you know, I made it public. <laughs> he, I can't believe he's still running with the acing the cognitive tests line. That's a real bold move. Still going with that one is a is is definitely a bold move. I'll say that much. It's kind of crazy that he's still running with that. All this time later, I aced the cognitive test. Best score they've ever seen. They said I was a truly stable genius. Grime Dango, welcome. So wonderful to see you. I told you that it would be a treat. You have, you, we have maintained somehow, despite our vibes being assaulted by easily the worst presidential debate I have ever seen in my entire life. Here, through my demonic and divine aura, I have protected us. And not only have we stayed strong, but we've had a good time. Pookie says, the debate fucked me up and I'm coping. We're going to talk about that. I promise you will be pleased if you stay. I will unfuck you up. I'll do my best to unfuck you up. Okay? Have some faith and you'll find yourself. You'll find yourself. You know what? Here, I'll do it. Go together with me. Let us go together. The Linkara? Oh, yeah. Linkara was... <laughs> Linkara was was given to us by uh, by retcon. So yeah Let's go. Let's go He took none. I'd like to see him take one just one a real easy one like go through the first five questions He couldn't do it, but I took two cognitive tests. I took physical exams every year and you know We knock on wood wherever we may have wood that I'm in very good health I just won two club championships not even senior two regular club championships to do that you have to be Quite smart. Thank you, you not on fire yet. Thank a long you. Long way, and I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't go 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf. 
Holy shit! We need the Joe Biden expression check immediately. Holy shit! What the fuck is this? I gotta hide the gifts for just a second so you guys can see just how he's, he's, he, it, the drugs finally hit. Holy shit, bro. What is this one? <laughs> My God. Oh, it's, it's finally happened. He's been looking terrified all night. And he's finally something, something hit. He's locking in, maybe. We'll see, I guess. <laughs> oh my god. Off the chain. Red Cactus, thank you so much. I'll get that up for you right now. Thank you so much, Red Cactus. And Isaac the Great, thank you so much. Isaac says, how can we avoid dooming, especially after seeing something like this? Also, can you change my name? I can indeed do that. You'll have to give me a minute. Um, I can do that for sure. Um, I'll, we're going to talk about how not to doom after this. I promise, okay? I promise. Let me get these, these up. Let's go. Match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. Uh, I think I'm in very good shape. I feel that I'm as in good a shape as I was 25, 30 years ago. Actually, I'm probably a little bit lighter, but I'm in as good a shape as I was. Dude, uh, come on. Years ago. I feel very good. I feel the same. 25 I years I ago. to take a cognitive test. And you know what? If I didn't do well, I aced him. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, who's a great guy when he was White House doctor. And then I took another one, a similar one. And both, one of them said they've never seen anybody ace him. Thank you. President Biden. Very stable you genius. You see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds, or 235 pounds. Well, you said six four, 200. Well, anyway. What? Anyway, just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. Are you body, is he, Joe's breaking up the body shaming? But he fumbled it. He tried so hard. He tried for the body shame and he dropped the ball. God damn it. Oh man, come on, dude. Come on, man. Oh, all right, let's go. Is gift suggestions just for donos? Yes, just for donos. Otherwise we'd be completely buried in them. Yo, Akumi, thank you so much. That's incredibly generous. Thank you so very much. Oh, that's a that's a based one. We're getting that one going. Come on, Jack. I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Got yours, Daharumba. Daharumba, thank you so much. He's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Never. But I have, you know how many, how, I've seen what are they talking about? I'm sorry, can I, can, did I miss something? What the fuck? Hey, that's it, you're, anyway, just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, my handicap? And, but by the way, I told oh, you. Oh, this is golf, okay. This is golf. They're they're golf. They're waffling about golf. This is this is real right now. By the way, can I just be? This is real retirement home argument energy. These people are vying for the most powerful position in the world, and they are both mumbling about their handicap level in fucking golf. Holy fuck! This is so bad. This is so bad. Oh my god. Oh well, I'm god. happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. If <laughs> you, you carry your own bag? What the literal old man fight? That's the biggest lie that he's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight 
Never. But I have, you know how many, how, I've what, seen you swing, I know you swing. You, hey, let's, oh! let's not act like children. President Trump, we're going to turn. Let's round. not act like children. You to a, a specific concern that voters have about you. Will you pledge tonight that once all legal challenges have been exhausted, that you will accept the results of this election, regardless of who wins, and you will say right now that political violence in any form is unacceptable. Well, I shouldn't have to say that, but of course I believe that. It's totally unacceptable. And if you would see my statements that I made on Twitter at the time, and also my statement that I made in the Rose Garden, you would say it's one of the strongest statements you've ever seen. In addition to the speech I made, in front of, I believe, the largest crowd I've ever spoken to, and I will tell you, nobody ever talks about that. They talk about a relatively small number of people that went to the- He's back at it. I regret to inform you that the Joe Biden reaction cam is back at it. He's doing it again. We're back on the death stare. Man is crossing into the shadow realm and struggling to find his scatu tree fra fragments. The Capitol, and in many cases were ushered in by the police. And as Nancy Pelosi said- Panic Stasis, thank you so much. We're gonna get your gift right up on there. Thank you for supporting the show. It was her responsibility, not mine. She said that loud and clear. But the answer is, uh, if the election is fair, free, and I want that more than anybody. And I'll tell you something. I wish he was a great president because I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be at one of my many places enjoying myself. I wouldn't be under indictment because I wouldn't have been his political appointment, you know, a, opponent because he indicted me because I was his opponent. I wish he was a great president. I would rather have that. I wouldn't be here. I don't mind being here. But the only reason I'm here is he's so bad as a president that I'm going to make America great again. We're going to make America great again. Arlo says, Skadu is old English spelling for shadow. Shadow. Yes, I know that. But because I am an equal divine, I declare and choose to say it the incorrect way for the epic reason that it is funnier to say it as Skadu. B -b 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 Bazinga. And we're a failing nation right now. We're a seriously failing nation. And we're a failing nation because of him. His policies are so bad. Uh, his military policies are uh, insane. They're insane. These are wars that will never end with him. He will drive us into World War III. And we're closer to World War III than anybody can imagine. We are very, very close to World War III. And he's driving us there. And Kim Jong-un and uh, President Xi of China, Kim Jong-un of North Korea, uh, all of these, Putin, they don't respect him. They don't fear him. They have nothing going with this gentleman, and he's going to drive it. Gaunt Yeti, thank you so much. And Irrescended Kittens, thank you so very much. Listen to World War III. You want a World War III, let him follow and win, and let Putin say, do what you want, NATO. Just do what you want. There's a thing called Article V. An attack on one is an attack on all. We've been here already. We're looping again. We've been here already. They've both already said both of these things. We have been here all goddamn ready. Enough is enough. I can't handle it anymore. We're looping again. Will the, will the torment never end? The idea, the idea. I can't think of a single major leader in the world who wouldn't trade places with, with the job I've done and what they've done. Because we are a powerful nation. We have wonderful peace because of the people, not me. It's because of the American people. They're capable of anything, and they step up when they're needed. And right now, we're needed. We're needed to protect the world because of our own safety is at stake. And again, you want to have a war. Uh, ultraviolet, we're going to need a more comp complex name than that. We can't have a name that's only four characters. And also, I'm pretty sure there's already other Junes in the chat. So you got to give me a little more to go with. Thank you very much for the donation. Uh, please email me with your name change. It's really hard for me to do those live. I'm going to do the other one because I said I would, but I can't do any more name changes. If you want a name change, just shoot me an email, demonmamaonline at gmail.com, and I will get you taken care of. Or just let Putin go ahead and take Kiev, make sure they move on, see what happens in Poland, Hungary, and other places along that border. Then you have a war. President Trump, as I come back to you for a follow-up, the question was, will you accept the results of this election, regardless of who wins? 
just to finish what he said, if I might, uh, Russia, they took a lot of land from Bush. They took a lot of land from Obama and Biden. They took no land, nothing from Trump, nothing. He knew not to do it. You're not going to play games with me. He knew that. I got along with him very well, but he knew not to play games. He took nothing from me. But now he's going to take the whole thing from this man right here. That's a war that should have never started. It would have never started ever with me. And he's going to take Ukraine. And, you know, you asked me a question before, would you do this? With he's got us in such a bad position right now with, with Ukraine and Russia, because Ukraine's not winning that war. He said, I will never settle until such time. They're running out of people. They're running out of soldiers. They've lost so many people. It's so sad. They've lost so many people, and they've lost those gorgeous cities with the golden domes that are a thousand years old, all because of him and stupid decisions. Russia would have never attacked if president I were president. Trump, the question was, will you accept the results of the election, regardless of who wins? Yes or no, please. If it's a fair and legal and good election, absolutely. I would have much rather accepted these. But the, the fraud and everything else was ridiculous. And if you want, we'll have a news conference on it in a week. Or we'll have another one of these on a, in a week. But I will absolutely, there's nothing I'd rather do. It would be much easier for me to do that than I'm running again. I wasn't really going to run until I saw the horrible job he did. He's destroying our country. I would be very happy to be someplace else, in a nice location someplace. And again, no. He just said this. Did I rewind? I didn't rewind, did I? He just said this, didn't he? What the fuck? No indictments, no political opponent stuff, because it's the only way he thinks he can win. But unfortunately, it's driven up my numbers and driven them up to a very high level because the people understand it. Well, let's see what your numbers are when this election is over. Let's see. Let's see. You're a whiner. When you lost the first time, you you continued. You appealed and appealed to courts all across the country. Not one single court in America said any of your claims had any merit, state or local. None. But you continue to provoke. It is funny when he calls him a whiner, but he already did it. This is almost verbatim what they said earlier. They just did this. He just fucking did this. Hey, hey, Pillow, great to see you. It's fucking round two. It's like the fucking rehearsal over here. What the fuck? This lie about somehow there's all this misrepresentation, all this stealing. There is no evidence of that at all. And I tell you what, I doubt whether you'll accept it because you're such a whiner. The idea if you lose again, you accepting anything, you can't stand the loss. Something snapped in you when you lost the last time. We'll be right back with more from the CNN presidential debate live. Now I channel my supreme power to jump forward in time. Jump forward to this. What? <laughs> I landed on that organically, okay? I didn't shop for that one. I just landed on it, all right? Holy shit. <sighs> We're back at it again, folks. He's still scared. Zoink, Scoob. Zoink, Scoob. Why is Lord Wolnir? Why is he picking up his chalice? He's got these giant bangles on his on his on his wrists and he's reaching for me to pull me down into the void. Holy shit. Now, watching this debate, do you think the tax system is fair? The fact is that I said Pizza dude, thank you so very much. Nobody even making under four hundred thousand dollars had a single penny increase in their taxes, and will not. And if I'm reelected, that will be the case again. Yes, you absolutely can, Grime Dango. You just send me that gif, and it's going up there. I'll even make it bigger. 
I'm that but special. You're that special. This guy is, has increased your taxes because of the deficit, number one. He's increased inflation because of the debacle he left after the way he handled the pandemic. And he finds himself in a position where he now wants to tax you more by putting a 10 percent tariff on everything that comes into the United States of America. What I did when, for example, he wants to get away with, get rid of the ability of Medicare to, uh, the, for the ability to. No, Joe, stop, bro. One sentence. Can we get one? For the. Uh, Grime Dango says that mac and cheese was a banger, the banger of all banger mac and cheeses. It truly was. We really, you, you, you executed on us putting our heads together and picking the cheeses to an unfathomable level. Like, it truly was the banger of all bangers. I had, I warmed up a bit of it uh, yesterday and had a giant bowl of it. And it was, I swear to God, the only thing that had degraded even a little bit was just the texture of the macaronis themselves. And everything else, it was the most sublime, cheesy, rich, delicious thing ever. It was truly next level. Just wanted to throw that out there. To be able to negotiate drug prices with the big pharma companies. Well, guess what? We got it, we got it down to 15, excuse me, $35 for insulin instead of $400. No more than $2,000 for every senior no matter what they, how much prescription they need. You know what that did? That reduced the federal debt, debt by $160 billion dollars over 10 Dude. years because the government doesn't have to pay the exorbitant prices. I'm going to make that available to every senior all, all along. He's struggling now. so hard. And it's everybody killing in me. America. He wants to get rid of that. We have, I'm going to make sure that we have child care. We're going to significantly increase the credit people have for child care. I'm going to make sure we do something about what we're doing on lead pipes and all the things that are causing health problems for people across the country. We're going to continue to fight to bring down inflation and give people a break. Thank you, President Biden. President Trump, you now have two minutes for your closing statement. That was, like so many that was the worst closing statement I've ever heard in my entire life. I can't believe that that was a goddamn closing statement and not like a dream recording that somebody took of Joe Biden at night while he was going, oh, oh please, please, don't let the, don't let the, don't let the puppy walk on, walk on my sandwich. Don't let the, my, the clutch on my truck's gone. I can't handle it. It's all boot leather, man. It's all... It's turtles all the way down. That's a load of malarkey. I tell you what, I, 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 I'm reaching out to the sun, and and the sun is my sun, and it's low. It's, it's just Jack. I can't hear you anymore. I got brain damage over in Iran. Titians, this man is just a complainer. He said, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to get rid of this tax, that tax. But he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do — all he does is make our country unsafe by allowing millions and millions of people to pour in. Our military doesn't respect him. We look like fools in Afghanistan. Uh, we didn't stop Israel. It was such a horrible thing. That would have never happened. It should have never happened. Iran was broke. Anybody that did business with Iran, including China, they couldn't do business. Okay, but, like, can we see, though, like — can we see that Donald Trump is just doing his Donald Trump, like normal Donald Trump stuff, literally reciting word for word his rally speeches, and Joe Biden is like, I don't even know. He's like fucking Pa Grape from VeggieTales if Pa Grape got stepped on. The... the there's nothing spectacular about what Trump is doing here. There's nothing worthy of praising Trump at all. But he's not failing, and that's all that he needed to do. No, Uncle Gumbald. Pa Grape. Are you for real? You can't be serious. 
Paw Grape was incredibly sharp and witty. Excuse me very much. That's why I said if he got stepped on. I agree, he was sharp and witty. Honestly, I think the Dem should run Paw Grape. This with the United States. They all passed. Iran was broke. They had no money for Hamas or Hezbollah, for terror, no money whatsoever. Again, Ukraine should have never happened. He talks about all the stuff, but he didn't do it. For three and a half years, we're living in hell. We have the Palestinians and we have everybody else rioting all over the place. You talk about Charlottesville. This is a hundred times Charlottesville, a thousand times. Char the whole country is exploding because of you, because they don't respect you and they have to respect their president and they don't respect you throughout the world. What we did was incredible. We re rebuilt the military. We got the largest tax cut in history, the largest regulation cut in history. The reason he's got jobs is because I cut the regulations that gave jobs, but he's putting a lot of those regulations back on. All of the things that we've done, nobody's ever, never seen anything like, even from a medical standpoint, right to try, where we can try space age materials instead of going to Asia or going to Europe and trying to get when you're terminally ill, now you can go and you can get something. You sign a document. They've been trying to get it for 42 years. But you know what we did for the military was incredible choice for our soldiers. We're our soldiers. So this is also deranged and rambly, but that's normal for Trump. Everybody already knows that he's deranged and rambly. And also he's high energy. I genuinely think that Joe Biden lost this debate so hard. It's unfathomable. I can't wait. We, we're going to have to do a check, a temperature check on liberal Twitter after this because I have a feeling that liberal Twitter right now is going to look something like the, um, the copium haze that we saw in the like fallout after January 6th. You guys remember, um, you all remember when, uh, when we went and checked in after Donald Trump, like, did that statement where he was basically like, oh, actually, the January 6th people were cringe and unbased. Um, and then places like the Donald and everywhere else were like, it's over, man! I mean, I mean, it's over for Joe Biden, totally! And they were, like, screaming, and their faces were melting, and their eyes were falling out. They're calling for him to step down on the news. Twitter is panicking right now. Wait, for real? I need links to that. A pillow, give me those links. I need that. Holy shit. Callan Cypher says Demon Mama being prophetic up in here. What can I say? I have the sight. Just instead of waiting for three months to see a doctor, can go out and get themselves fixed up and readied up and take care of themselves and their living. And that's why I had the highest approval rating in the history of the VA. So all of these things, we're in a failing nation, but it's not going to be failing anymore. We're going to make it great again. Thank you, former President Trump, President Biden. Stay with us because we have full analysis of this debate. Anderson Cooper and Aaron Burnett starts now on CNN. Okay. Immediately after this debate, they say it. For real? Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to stay with them then. We're going to stay with them. We're going to hear what they have to say. For those of you who are here, make sure that you've pressed subscribe down below because you have witnessed with your own eyes what a demon can do to protect you from the nightmare that is whatever this trash was served at us. And also, make sure that you press like. If you want your GIF up on the screen, this is your last chance because soon we'll wipe the slate clean and all of our art that we created will disappear like tears in the rain. Let's continue. Let's hear what they have to say. Hello? Oh man, Joe's looking so bad. Look, 
Oh, you can't actually see him over there. Hold on. Look at Joe. You still can't see him very well. Let me clear this all off just real quick so you can see. Look at Joe's expression. He knows he did badly. He knows he did badly. Whatever you want to donate, Louie boy, it's fine. At this point, it's nearly the end, so if you if you don't have if you don't want to, we were doing five dollars for a gift, but you don't gotta. It's towards the end, so go ahead. Holy shit, you are not kidding. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. We gotta hear this. Well, there's no no there's no noise right now, so I guess we're gonna wait. But this is one for the ageists. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, do not post. Don't post rip in chat. That's gonna be offensive. Please do not post rip. Rest in peace. The liberals are demanding we do not post R.I.P. in chat. That's that's uh, that's that that's guy who's literally looking at the Reaper phobic. No skull emojis. Keep the skull emojis out of chat. No graves gravestone emojis. No coffins. No vampire bats. No worms. Okay? None of those. Keep them out of chat, everybody. Let's keep it clean. Yes, we no longer, we're banning the word reaper. We will now be using a more politically correct term, the harvestman. Okay? Let's continue. Let's see what they have to say here. No, no, ghosts, get him out of chat. Coffins, ghosts, skulls, get him out of chat. No, no. And that's a wrap. The first presidential debate of the 2024 election cycle is in the books. President Biden and former President Trump addressing several issues tonight with moderators Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. The economy, immigration, foreign policy. Fake, fake ass. I actually have to avoid saying that word because that'll get me demonetized. Fake ass T, thank you so much. And yes, I can see the name of the gift. We will put that one on right away. Thank you very much. Red Cactus, also, thank you very, very, very much. Oh my God, A Pillow, you're not kidding. Holy shit. Oh my God, we're going to have to look at all of this. Oh my, oh my God. Is it over? Is it so over? Is it actually so over? Holy moly, this is crazy. It might be so over. We're gonna have to see this. I didn't expect this. Oh my God, oh my God. It might be Jover. We're gonna have to look into this ASAP. Let's get to this. We gotta, we gotta make good time, but I gotta get these things up here because you are so kindly donating to our beautiful work of art before it's over. We might be looking, it might, we might be witnessing an unprecedented event. There we go, there we go. Excellent, thank you all so very much. Let's continue, let's continue. And abortion among others. C-SPAN's coverage continues tonight of the first presidential debate. A look now inside the spin room, live coverage where surrogates for the candidates are now, will start talking to reporters to give their analysis of the evening. C-SPAN's cameras are of course there on the ground. And we'll- Are they gonna run Hillary again? Unironically, I, do, I, I don't, it, this is a tough call, but a part of me thinks Hillary might actually do better. Bringing you highlights from there for the next hour or so. We will also take your calls until midnight tonight, and at that point, then we will re-air tonight's debate in its entirety. We want to hear from you first, though. What's your reaction to tonight's debate? What did the candidates say that resonated with you? What did you want to hear that you didn't hear? Xerox, thank you so very much. We're going to get that right up in there. Thank you very much, Xerox. Thank you so much. This way, if you're supporting President Biden, call in at 202-748-8920. If you support the former president, your line tonight is 202-748-8921.
If you're undecided, still undecided, after tonight's debate, call in at 202-748-8922. And if you've decided to support a third party candidate, you can call us at 202-748-8923. Remember, you can join the conversation on X with the handle at C-SPAN, also on facebook.com slash C-SPAN, or you can text us with your first name, city and state to 202-748-8903. The calls are in, Angie and Canton. Oh my God, the post-debate poll. The post-debate poll has Biden getting destroyed. Ohio, supporting the former president. Angie, you are up first. What is your reaction to tonight's debate? Angie? So wait, wait, hold on a second. Who said that they talk about this on here? This is on C-SPAN. Do they discuss the Donald, the, do they discuss asking him to step down um, on the C-SPAN one or is it on the CNN one? Because we're watching the C-SPAN one. Oh, here we go. CNN pundits do? Can I get a link on that? We got to stop the C-SPAN one and we got to move over. Can I get, can anybody send me a link to the CNN one? I have a bunch of these to watch. No, I got your links. I got your links. A pillow, I got yours. So is Van Jones? Okay. Hold on, we got to get to this. This is, this is deranged. Okay. So here's CBS. Okay, let's do the CBS one. This was the first one I received. Officials who hold office in the Democratic Party saying tonight about President Biden's performance. There are at least some House Democrats who were gathered tonight watching this together, talking about talking to the White House about having him step down. That's how bad it was in their view. Oh my God. That's, what? that's CBS. All right, this is Van Jones. Let's hear Van Jones from CNN. Consider going to want over over going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, but that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden, and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic over going. Wow. You want to see him consider um taking a different course now uh we're still far from our convention and there wow here's the start of the cnn one all right let's listen in on the cnn one i want to hear this is it going to work let's see Hmm, that link actually didn't work. I wish I could see what the timestamp actually was. It's because it's no longer live. So hold on, let's go to the end of the debate and let's see where the commentary comes in. Oh, I don't see it there. Hmm. Okay. 2-12-41. Okay. That's not even visible on this one. What is going on here? This is a little bit busted, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it looks like they cut it. This one does. This one only goes to 138. Okay, so that link is uh, not going to work. We're going to try and get some other ones on here. So we got Van Jones. Here's CBS again. Here is CNN with with uh, with Harris. Link talking about an open convention. Oh my God! This might be a watershed moment. This is bad. This is really bad. Hey, um, <laughs> can I just say, have I not been talking about this for a really long time? You found the CNN one? Thank you. Here we go, here we go. The president and former president making their way off the CNN debate stage. Looks like uh, Jill Biden, the first lady, ha has come out. Former President Trump walking off the stage. 
The first debate of the 2024 campaign and the earliest presidential debate ever now in the books and in front of the voters. Tonight, along with Aaron Burnett, the first word on what those voters might make of it from our political professionals, from our CNN Flash Poll and Swing State Focus Group. We'll be talking to surrogates, including Vice President Harris, getting fact checks from our Daniel Dale and new reporting from inside both campaigns. With me here, CNN political commentator Scott Jennings, Kate Bedingfield, David Urban, Van Jones, Alyssa Farr Griffin, and Newsnight anchor Abby Phillip and David Axelrod and CNN Chief National Correspondent John King. John, let me start with you, your thoughts. Anderson, this was a game-changing debate in the sense that right now as we speak, there is a deep, a wide, and a very aggressive panic in the Democratic Party. It started minutes into the debate and it continues right now. It involves party strategists, it involves elected officials, it involves fundraisers. Holy shit. It is so motherfucking over. Oh my God. Razors. And they're having conversations about the president's performance, which they think was dismal, which they think will hurt other people down the party in the ticket. And they're having conversations about what they should do about it. Some of those conversations include, should we go to the White House and ask the president to step aside? Others are, other of the conversations are about, should prominent Democrats go public with that call? because they feel this debate was so terrible. Uh, they do say in, in moments in the debate later, the president got better and got his footing. But then at the end, even his closing statement was a little halting. The contrast between the two candidates. Let me be clear. None of them and a lot of Republicans don't think Donald Trump had a great night. Donald Trump broke the fact check machine more than I can count tonight. That will be on the record as we go forward. He refused to answer some very specific and direct questions about his conduct, about January 6th and what all. So that will be dealt with out there. And sometimes there's a parallel universe. By the way, this is a giant moment for Biden cells to, to finally face the music. We all have been sitting here getting gaslit by Biden cells. Have we not witnessed it? Have you not seen in this very chat the gaslighting by Biden cells? These people who have been saying, no, it's fine. You just want Trump to win. If you say this guy's fumbling the bag so bad and now it's taken this. It should have never gotten to this point. The first primary debate being a disaster to this degree should have never gotten here. This is gonna damage the Democrats. Even if they decide to course correct now and run somebody else, this is gonna hang over them. Biden cells exist? You have no idea how many Biden cells actually exist. You guys don't understand. When I made videos criticizing Joe Biden, okay? And I'm a lefty and I'm not an anti, I'm a very vocal, not anti-election uh, lefty. I tell people it's good to vote. I say that in every one of my videos. But when I made videos criticizing Biden, people unsubscribed from my channel. I'm not kidding you. We took subscriber hits because I said, guys, Joe Biden is struggling against Trump and it's his own fault. People told me that they would take, I'm not joking. I showed this on my stream. You can go back and verify it. In fact, I have it on my Twitter. Let me just get it right here. I'll read you what they said, okay? Let me just tell you what people said to me. It's gonna take me a second just to scroll back here. One second, here we go. I, here, let me show you. I'll clear everything off for just a second. Actually, we'll just do this. This is the easiest way. Right here. What type of, so here we go. So I said, I get tired of the salivating self-assured hatred of liberals. Heh, <laughs> can't wait for the other guy to put you in a camp since you criticized our guy's mad fumble. That was me paraphrasing a number of comments I received on my videos criticizing Joe Biden and telling people that he was damaging the Democrats' own chances. I explicitly was advocating that I hope that the Democrats win because I don't like Trump. And what I got in response was this type of stuff. I got multiple comments like this. Let me just show you this comment real quick that I got. You don't believe in incrementalism and voting for lesser evils. When fascism happens, you will be the first against the wall and a lot of us will take small pleasure in that will take a small pleasure in that. If you're not going to at least try and preserve democracy, we'll happily relish in your destruction, okay? So this is the shit that me and people like me have been subjected to for pointing out the obvious fact that Joe Biden is a giant goddamn disaster. Let's continue, shall we? 
Let's continue to see the, the, the Dems desperately and too late facing the music. Between the political elites and the American people, it'd be nice to see what the voters say. But I can tell you, it started minutes in. It started with the first couple of answers, and it has continued throughout the night from a, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, to what do we do about this? I, and it involves very senior people in the Democratic Party, including elected officials, saying we have a problem. And just to co-sign what John is saying, I mean, the panic that I am hearing from Democrats is not like anything that I have heard in this campaign so far. And a lot of it has to do with, first of all, there was a deep frustration about Trump's lies. I mean, he lied a lot tonight. Right. But, but the, the problem for Biden was that Trump was able to take some sometimes incredible falsehoods and turn them into some kind of argument, whereas Biden's answers were in a lot of cases not coherent. Deeply problematic that he was not able to uh, take pretty straightforward answers and answer them to the American public. And, and then also at some points bringing things up that teed up Trump attacks. So uh, there is a, a real concern here tonight that there's been some real damage done that cannot be undone. Arcanon says, tier one, I did a debate drinking game with my buddies. Nothing can bring back my liver nor take away my black pill on Biden. Oh, being blackpilled on Biden is fine, but I hope that I can cure your black pill by the end of this. Trust me, give it time. I'm sorry about your liver. Thank you for supporting the show. Biden solidified the perce perception among voters, but especially among his base. They were hoping that tonight would be a game changer. They are now seeing a president who is in the White House, who they do not necessarily believe can can do this for another four years. David Axelrod? Look, I, I can't argue with, with either of them about uh, how a Democrat leaders, Democratic leaders are reacting to this poll. We said at the beginning that each person had a fundamental goal. And for Biden, that goal was to appear energetic, engaged, and look like someone who is capable of serving for another four years uh, for president. That was job number one. I actually think he scored a bunch of points. I think if you just judge this on sort of policy stuff, uh, he did score a bunch of points on it. Oh my God, why is he so wet? Oh, you guys actually can't see this. I'll narrate this for you. This guy's shoulder is soaking wet. Like as in, like there's splotches of, it, of water spilled all over his shoulder. I don't know if it's sweat Maybe it's like he was wiping his sweat off. Oh, the sweat. Oh, yuck. You can actually see it dripping off of his comb over. Oh, dude, no. Oh, man. Here, let me show you. Look, you can see it dripping off his comb over. Look closely. Right over there. And you can see the drips coming off his comb over. Dude, bro. Ew, man. That's bad. Okay, that right there is the proof that this is a real deal. The fact that the CNN anchors are literally dripping sweat from their comb over and soaking their little tuxedo, their, their little suit jacket blazers, not tuxedos. That's the wrong word. That's actually crazy. Listen, we all get sweaty, okay? You all have seen me sweaty as hell in my little home studio. But these guys are pros, okay? These guys have giant air-conditioned studios. This has got to be real bad. Issues like abortion, for example, on some of the economic uh, issues. Uh, but um, there, is a, there is a feeling, I think there was a, a sense of shock, actually, at how he came out at the beginning of this debate, uh, how uh, his voice sounded about, you know, he seemed a little disoriented. He did get stronger as the debate went on, but by that time, I think the panic had set in. And I think you're gonna hear discussions that I don't know uh, will lead to anything, but there, you know, there, is a gonna, there are gonna be discussions about whether he should continue. And I think part of it is Donald Trump did not meet his mission either. He, re, he could not resist the, attention, uh, the, the, uh, the temptation to be nasty, to uh, prevaricate uh, about a whole yeah, but peop that's what people like that about Trump. The Trump being being catty and and sarcastic and 
and kind of funny at times is what people like about Trump. That would that's not like he doesn't need to appear more professional. What he needed to do was mix up his message a little bit. For tonight to be a success for for Trump, he needed to show something fresh. Trump was had a huge cultural impact in 2016 because Trump came onto the stage with saying things that no presidential candidate had ever done. He gave he gave his people who were interested in him the idea that he was a new guy. Anyway, let's continue. Can't get things, hung up. Uh, about his own record, about Biden's record, uh, and to see... Bonks Daily with the Tier 2 sub. Thank you so much, Bonks. I think I'd rather be in a field somewhere in 1900s Russia. Sure, there's a plague, but the Gorkon, the Gorkon is looking like a nice swim compared to this. True! True! Petty and small at times. So what you saw was a candidate who's deeply vulnerable and a president who may not be able to take advantage of it. I, I, listen, if, if anybody in America thinks that that was even close to being a, a, an okay debate by Joe Biden, I'm living in a parallel universe. That was an unmitigated disaster for President Biden from the second he walked out to the closing statement. This guy is a Republican strategist, by the way, but unfortunately, he's 100% right. He's just, he's just kind of correct. It wasn't, uh, we, we, I said that the whole time. This is a fucking unmitigated disaster. Moonbees, thank you so much. We're going to get that right up there now. Thank you so much. I'm saving all these links, a pillow. We're going to go over the biggest all of them. issue for Democrats is abortion. And he couldn't give an answer. True. <laughs> Holy shit. He's right. This Republican strategist is actually correct. What the fuck? That's what I said. Even answer a three. Uh, he couldn't even give a coherent answer on the biggest issue for, uh, for Democrats tonight. I've heard from leading Democrats across the United States, elected governors, congressmen, who are texting me and saying, I'm worried I'm going to lose if Joe Biden's at the top of the ticket. Bob Casey, I promise you tonight in the state of Pennsylvania, is thrown up in his mouth because he knows that if he's got to stand next to Joe Biden, he's going down in Pennsylvania. Yep. True. This is a disaster. This is a disaster. If, if he's on the ticket, I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah, look, it was a really disappointing debate performance from Joe Biden. I don't think there's any way, any other way to slice it. His biggest uh, issue that he had to prove to the American people was that he had the energy, had the stamina, uh, and he didn't do that. And so I think uh, that is of concern. And, uh, and I think for a lot of Democrats, that's very, that's very disappointing. I will say Donald Trump also had... True, the, ba the, 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 the Bateman gif is, is absolutely on point right now. Some really rough moments in this debate. And you know, talking to the Biden campaign, they say you know, their dials uh, started really moving away from Trump as he was increasing his personal attacks on Biden. So I think there was a lot about his kind of character and the kind of personal nastiness that he was putting on display uh, you know, that doesn't help him with the swing voters that he needs. Uh, you know, and I also think you saw him continue to get sort of more and more animated across the course of the debate and, you know, give some really tr uh, problematic answers about January 6th, some really problem problematic answers about Putin. So, you know, Donald Trump did not get off scot-free tonight by any stretch. But look, there there is no two ways about it. That was not a good debate for Joe Biden. Ben? Um, that was painful. Uh, I love Joe Biden. I work for Joe Biden. Um, he didn't do well at all. Uh... Oh, man. This is the full Van Jones segment. Oh, my God. It is Jover. It is Jover. He, he did not do well at all. And he looked... You know, like, I... can, we just, can we just acknowledge my divine wisdom in choosing? Once again, I'm not, not trying to beat a dead horse here, but can we... Can we acknowledge my divine wisdom in uh, deciding to put that overlay of, uh, of Dale Cooper at the very beginning of all of this? I'll give you the analysis, you know, you kind of have the, the old man versus the con man. Uh, I can walk you through how I'm supposed to see it and say it, but I'm just... Oh, he, he's really, he's like actually got a, his voice is shaky. I saw one of the tweets said that he cried. But he's actually, he sounds like he's like, oh my God, it's over for me. When I speak from my heart, um, I love that guy. 
as a good man. He loves his country. Uh, he's doing the best that he can. Uh, but he had a test to meet tonight uh, to restore confidence uh, uh, of, of the country and of the base. And he failed to do that. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention. And there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, but that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden. And it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not Good night, just panic, Danny, and it's thank pain you. of what we saw tonight. And if I may just ask. Wow. Um. Wow. Add to that. I think Joe Biden lost in the first three minutes. I think a lot of voters probably tuned out and millions of people are having conversations with their families, with their friends, of if the president is up to the task and if he should step aside. And I'm someone who believes the former president is a threat to democracy. I think he is a threat to the America as we know it. He wants to fundamentally change our institutions. He has laid out what his plan is. I am not confident that that is the man to take him on. You cannot tell me democracy is on the line and then give that performance tonight. If That's what I said. I've been saying that since January. No, since before January. Do you guys remember me saying that the messaging that democracy is on the line and then Joe Biden can't even acknowledge that, that, that he's alienating people? Oh my God. It's like these people... These Democrat CNN people are cribbing my goddamn lines. That's how you know, by the way, that it's the era of demon mama. The Biden cells and everyone who's been unbelievably cruel, the people who have gaslit this community, now they must know that our time has come, that our words were there before theirs. We saw this shit coming hardcore. We articulated it in detail. It's not just like I was some Biden hater just being like, oh, I don't like Joe Biden. I described these exact things and I warned that there would be a moment like this. Unbelievable. It's the era of the imp for real. Based on that, in 18 weeks, Donald Trump will be the president elect. The people doing focus groups tonight, and we'll see if our style group with Laura Coates confirms this, say that Biden actually scores pretty well on the issues when he's talking about the yeah. substance. And Trump's numbers went down both because he was ducking questions, he was lying about some things, and he was refusing to answer. And some of, some of, the, some of it was the tone. They don't like him. So when you see that, you know, when you see sort of the statistics yeah. You know, you're going to look at like, oh, that's a mixed bag. But to Van's point about the president's performance, that's what caused the panic. So the, qu the question is, and my question actually is, what happens? Because to his, it's a great political strength of Joe Biden is his resilience and his stubbornness. Yeah. Uh, it's also sometimes a blind spot because he is so stubborn. It's going to be very hard to someone, and I don't know who it is, who could go to Joe Biden and Wait. say, you, you, you need to do this, uh, number one. Uh, and the question is, again, like, I'm just telling you, to Abby's point, I've been doing this for 30 something years, going on 40 years, and I have never, yeah. ever had what happened on this thing tonight happen in the middle of a debate. It started early and it continued. And to, to Van's point, Van made a very important point. These are people who love Joe Biden, who, who credit Joe Biden for kicking Donald Trump out of the White House. They're Democrats. The Democratic Party is a very diverse party. It fights about a lot of- Clover, thank you very, very much. And absolutely, I'll put this up right now. Oh my God, you are 100% right. The, de the Democratic Party right now is this next gift. Things. It has generational issues, it's had regional issues and everything else. The thing that unites the Democratic Party is trying to keep Donald Trump from getting back into the White House. They love Joe Biden for kicking him out. They don't want him back. They came into this debate nervous that Biden was in a weak position. They leave this debate panicked. John, if you love the guy, how could you put him out there? That's like that? If you love him. If you love Joe- This is the war- Oh no! The Republican! This is what we knew Republicans were gonna be able to do! If you care about the guy, why'd you do this? Why did it take you to this point? And he's right! Unfortunately, he's right! Oh God. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. That's the, that is the entirety of the Democratic Party right now. Delfina with the unbelievably generous $15 super chat. Oh my God. 
Delfina, wow, you already got four likes on that. Damn. Delfina says, this is my first time watching you and I absolutely love your vibes. Thank you for the Righteous Fury and unkillable combo energy right now. Needed it bad. Hope you take care of yourself after this, uh, too. Um... Oh, this is a this is an obscene and absurd watch, but I don't feel depressed or doomer at all. Uh, I should just I'm, we're gonna talk about this in a moment once we're through with the reaction portion. We're gonna have a discussion, but I want you to know I feel zero doom and I feel uh, none of that. I feel absolutely no doom. The doom that I felt was earlier when I realized that um, that Joe Bi the, the the worst doom that I felt in recent memory was in was during the latter half of October when I realized that Joe Biden and the Democratic Party were going to functionally run on genocide. That was the part where I felt like uh, very doom doomy, but I got over it and pushed through it with a lot of thought. And since then, this has been exactly what I've been talking about. In fact, this moment is is perhaps the most important moment we've seen in politics in a long time because it is the finally, finally, and it came too late, but it's finally a wake-up call for these people. Not, it seems like nothing else could wake them up. Genocide Joe, his numbers tanking everywhere, the polling about his age, nothing could wake them up. But this seems, and we can only hope that this has woken them up in time. I don't know that it has, but we can only hope that. Anyway, Delfina, thank you very, very much. We're going to talk about this a lot more in a minute. Let's finish what we're watching. Biden, if that was my father, you don't uh, put a guy in that situation. Well, it's a, a, it's a, it's a great that point. Is, is these guys, these guys. Seriously joking with the $10 super chat. We all lose. True. But only in so far as the state of the world, the portion of the world that we can't control anyway, has moved in a difficult direction. For people like myself, and for people like you all out there, we're simply watching. We've climbed up on a hill and we are observing the weather as it comes to us. None of us in this chat that I know of are uh, high-level, high-ranking Democratic advisors who have the ear of the president. We are, at, we are functionally everyday average people. And my politics... As far as I can go with my little platform here as an entertainer on the internet, my platform has always been to try and encourage people to find power among themselves with one another by building robust networks of solidarity, by helping each other in tangible and meaningful ways, making their lives better so that we can survive and so that we can impact the world in real ways beyond uh, the endless churn of the democratic machine. The, Democrat, the, the electoralist democratic machine has a tendency of chewing people up and spitting them out. And what I mean by that is that they convince people that if you give them your money, your time, your energy, that the world will be better. But this proves, ultimately, that that's not how it works and that people actually have to be choosy with their time and their energy, that they should put it towards things that matter and that they shouldn't buy, whole, like, you know, bald-faced buy uh, the lies that are offered by a by a machine that has more money than you can ever imagine. That people have to be more thoughtful about their politics and how they truly impact the world. So in a certain way, yes, we do all lose. Because right now, the likelihood of Donald Trump becoming president and America getting even worse for, for most everyone, has that likelihood has increased. But we don't all lose in the sense that we... Now, it's a moment of, it can be a moment of awakening for people, where people realize the politics that matter is the politics they can actually do, the politics they can actually participate in, not the myths and the lies of a hyper-nationalist, fascistic-leaning machine that wants you to subsume yourself, your community, the people that you love, into, uh, into, in, into their meat grinder. Another board person says, can you add the We Taught a Lion to Eat Tofu gift from Futurama? I feel it's pretty appropriate to the situation. I don't know that gift, but if you send it to me, another board person, um, or if somebody else sends it to me, I'll add it since you gave a donation. Thank you very, very much. Seriously joking with the $20. Demon Mama for president. 
Unfortunately, I cannot accept the role of president as it would limit my position as a divine. But thank you very, very much, truly. Thank you so much for that incredibly generous $20 super chat. Seriously, thank you so much. Al the Healer, thank you so much for renewing your membership. Thank you so very much. Let's continue. Know this better. Yeah, I, These guys know this better because they talk to them. There's this legacy in the Democratic Party. You don't challenge the incumbent because when it's happened in the past, they, ha they haven't beaten the incumbent, and then the incumbent has lost actually, the general election. It was actually Donald Trump that helped make Joe Biden the nominee because there was a feeling that if there were a primary, that that would weaken, that Biden would probably win, but it would weaken him in a general election. And so there were people who could have run and didn't run because the history of that is bad. The point is now he is the nominee of the Democratic Party. This isn't the 60s, okay? Vote Comrade Girl 2018 says, with the $5, thank you very much, says, I wasn't worried until October 7th. Now I'm fucking scared. I'm almost in doomed territory. I'm worried for our people. We'll talk about this in just a minute. I'll clear all the gifts up and we'll have a serious conversation, but we gotta get through this. I promise I'll address that. Thank you. Irrescended Kitten with the $5, thank you very, very much. As well, I will address that question in full in a minute. Your ascended kitten says your coverage has been awesome. However, what can we do to prepare, prepare no matter what happens in November? We're going to get right there. Let's continue. Voters choose the nominee. He is the nominee. Only he can decide whether he's going to continue. And as you point out, and as Kate knows very well, this is a guy with a lot of pride and who believes in himself. And the idea that he's going to say, you know what? I had a bad debate. I think I'm going to walk away from this. I find it hard to it believe. Was okay, so that's that. So that's the CNN one. Let's see what other options we've got here. This is from, here we go. Let's hear this one. In a slight cold. Let's hear this. This is from MSNBC. Let's hear MSNBC. Hold as well. So I understand not feeling well. And, you know, obviously Joe Biden comes in with certain deficits. He has a stutter. You know, he is, it, it is more difficult for him to communicate for that reason. So there's a lot to mitigate the way that he speaks and you can understand it. And we've observed him for a long time. That said, um, I, too, was on the phone throughout much of the debate um, with um, Obama, world people, with Democrats, um, with people who are political operatives. Oh, man, it's got to be bad. Whole, it is truly a full panic. With campaign operatives, my phone really never stopped uh, buzzing throughout. And the um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Hmm. Um, the people who were texting with me were um, very concerned um, about uh, President Biden seeming extremely feeble, seeming extremely weak. And, you know, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier. President Biden had one job tonight and it was it, it one primary job. And yes, it was to litigate Donald Trump's, you know, criminality and, and all of those things. But he had to settle his own party. Mm -hmm. He needed to settle Democrats. Democrats, you know, they always talk about the Democrats are bedwetters and Democrats. All right, Arlo, chill. Seriously. You got one warning. Democrats are always panicking. Yes, Democrats are always panicking. They're always scared. You, right? They're always... Femboyo with the $10 super chat and the first super chat ever on, on a stream ever. Thank you so much, Femboyo. Hopefully we can channel all trans femme magic into making Biden step down. Here's hoping, but... Uh, Joe Biden is his own agent. Thinking they're going to lose. Like, Democrats are, are very pessimistic. They're, they're, this is just neurotic. who they are. They're neurotic. But Joe Biden's job was to reassure them tonight. His job was to calm his party, to make them feel that, yes, I can do this. I have four more years in me. I have the ability uh, and the stamina and the strength to do four more years. He did not do that. He did the opposite of that. He made them more panicked. The mm -hmm. people who were texting me were even more panicked. They actually expected it to be better than it was. And now they're in a, I, I won't say a full-fledged panic, but it's getting there. And are the are people that you're talking to who are expressing these concerns, are these people who are involved in democratic politics or yes. are these liberals watching TV? This is not liberals watching TV. These are, these are campaign people. Mm -hmm. These are people who are either... Thank you once again, seriously, joking. Uh, and true. Democratic operatives, these are people who are former, you know, sort of Obama, Obama World Administration people. These are people who are in the business. Okay. So the, the civilians are also panicking. Uh, they're also <laughs> texting me, but I was trying to kind of ignore the civilians and really talk to the campaign folks. Bro. Democrat moment. 
referring to yourself as re, MSNB, MSNBC people are so goddamn cringe. Re, referring to yourself as a political commentator, as like other people as civilians, and yourself as if you're like a military combatant is the biggest cringe thing I've ever heard in my entire goddamn life. There are times where I feel like self-conscious about being a political streamer at all. Like being like, is, isn't is streaming like kind of fundamentally goofy and entertaining? And maybe politics streaming is in and of itself like a little bit goofy to do. And then I remember that this is what like two-bit journalists on MSNBC think of themselves. They literally think of themselves as like a separate warrior cast and they refer to other people as civilians. And then they go, I was trying to ignore the civilians. Oh my God, this is so goddamn embarrassing. Those of us out here who have been listening to like everyday average people instead of huffing democratic fucking fumes, uh, we all know that Joe has been bombing it. And maybe if they spent less time listening to their dumbass political analyst moron friends and instead listened to those everyday average people, the civilians, quote unquote, they would have seen this coming in advance. So um, trash. People are, um, they're worried and there is, you know, it's not a, a full drum beat yet, but there is talk of, look, here's the thing. We know, I, I know a lot of politicians. I just happen to know a lot of them yeah. at a lot of levels. They all believe that they have a unique ability to run the race that they passionately want to run. And I know for a fact that Joe Biden passionately believes that he is the only person who can beat Donald Trump. And he has evidence of it because he did it before. Right. He knows that he has certain demographic strengths that Donald Trump cannot counter. He is the real working class white guy that's actually Donald Trump's base. So he knows how to talk to them. He, he believes that he is the only person that can do it. Bro. Oh, true. It would be great to get the check-in on the liberal on the liberal earlier. Oh yeah, but why? Oh, god damn it! But Marissa got muted for fighting with a mod. God damn it! That would have been so funny. It would have been so interesting to see how 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 it how it would go from here. Oh man, that would have been a real uh, whatever. The problem is after tonight, his party doesn't believe that. I want to okay. hear. There'll be others. There will be others. Okay, wow. Uh, we are getting, oh, here we go. Here's, here's Kamala Harris. Let's hear Kamala Harris. And John King has just. Okay, let's hear Kamala Harris. Described a panic inside the Democratic. Why is she, oh my God. I gotta show you this real quick. Kamala Harris is wearing all black. Terrible decision. Terrible, 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 terrible decision. Why would they put, why would she wear funeral clothing? Oh no! What were they, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Ah! Party right now because of President Biden's performance in tonight's debate. He's been hearing from Democratic lawmakers and others around the country. Um, some within your own party are, are wondering if President Biden should even step aside. What do you say to that? Listen, first of all, what we saw tonight is that the president. Oh, my God. She is shaky, too. So we got Anderson Cooper directly asking the VP voicing that people are saying that Joe Biden needs to resign and Kamala responds with the shakiest voice ever. This is, it is Jover. It is so beyond Jover. This is the most Jover it's ever been. I can't believe we're witnessing this. Making a very clear contrast with Donald Trump on all of the issues that matter to the American people. Yes, there was a slow start, but it was a strong finish. And what became. No, she's coping! She's mad coping! Very clear through the course of the night is that Joe Biden is fighting on behalf of the American people. Arlo says, How can I have hope in this situation? Give me a cope infusion stat. I refuse a cope infusion. Instead, in just a moment, we will wipe clean the slate of all of our gifts, and I will give you a real hope infusion. 
on substance, on policy, on performance. Joe but Biden on, is extraordinarily strong. And that, I'm sorry, that on substance and policy and performance tonight, I mean, his, the president's performance tonight clearly would... Okay, gotta say, the absolute, the absolute uh, spine and or ambient pressure that, that, it, that, it, that it takes to get to the point where you interrupt the vice president to be like, I'm sorry, but you're lying to me right now. Stop, stop fucking no cap right now. Holy shit. Joe but Biden is extraordinarily strong. And but that, I'm sorry, that on substance and policy and performance tonight, I mean, his, the president's performance tonight clearly was disappointing for his supporters. CNN is reporting Democratic lawmakers watching the debate were worried, uh, worried about the president's performance. One said it was a, a disaster. Another called it a train wreck. Those are Democrats especially worried that Biden did not punch back on Trump's lies. Everyone, I regret to inform you Joe Biden has lost the mandate of heaven. One moment. Behold. Jeff Tiedrich. Jeff Tiedrich says. What the fuck did I just watch? You lost Jeff Tiedrich. Quite literally, this is like, unironically, this is like an et tu brute moment. Et tu, Jeff! Jeff Tiedrich, the Joe Biden rides in on his bicycle, flips a water bottle and says, Sup, motherfuckers? That guy has turned on Joe Biden. Fake ass tea, thank you so very, very, very much. Thank you very much. We're going to get that right up on there for you. Uh, listen, people can debate on style points, but ultimately this election and who is the president of the United States has... Style points! Kamala, he lost his train of thought in the middle of one of his most important issues and couldn't get it back. They had to stop him from talking because he couldn't find himself. It's not style points. It's over. Can you send me a different link there, Uncle Gumball, or a screenshot? I can't. Uh, I can't actually open that right easily right now. Holy God! It is so. This is a disaster. Got that one up there for you, fake ST. Right there. Bam. Let's get that one up. True, this is the Joe Biden moment right here. It has to be about substance. And the contrast is clear. Look at what happened during the course of the debate. Donald Trump lied over and over and over again, as he is wont to do. He would not disavow what happened on January 6th. He would not give a clear answer on whether he would stand by the election results this November. Wow. And John King. Oh my God. We can't see these easily. Okay, hold on. Let me see if there's anything else I need to watch. We saw that one already. Wait, no, wait, no, we didn't. Shit, why did I close that? Hold on. We didn't watch this one yet. Let's do this one. And then we're going to move to the next section. That said, um, I too was on the phone throughout much of the debate. Oh, yeah, we did see this one. This was the civvies clip. This was the civvies. Okay, let's see if there's any others we need to see. These are articles. This is David Pakman.
All right, let's let's hear let's well, that's a long clip. Okay, let's see what David Pakman had to say. All right, let's hear David Pakman. Oh no. Oh god, that's so sad. Sam and Emma from Sam and Emma from Majority Report just looking destroyed. God, that's depressing. Smoothie uh, with the 279 super chat. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Smoothie says, just join. What the hell is going on? Uh, we have witnessed a crumbling of the democratic order. I truly mean that. Um, Joe Biden performed in a public debate on national, on international television so poorly that the entire D democratic party is in a complete panic right now. And they are not um, on, they are not on board with their messaging. It is a disaster and we are witnessing it in real time. If you're asking what's going on on the screen, accept the flow. What you are witnessing is the primordial chaos being shaped by someone who knows the secret arts to protect you. Okay. This debate was damn near unwatchable and yet nearly 400 people successfully made it through the debate, and also had a fairly good time, despite it being one of the most obscene and disgusting debates of all time. That is what my type of, of, of unique magic can bring to you. That's what's going on. All right, let's see. Let's hear what Pacman says, and then we're going to move on to my section where we're going to clear off all of the gifts, and we'll go from there. Well, the first presidential debate of 2024 between failed former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden is over. And I have to tell you, it was not good. And I don't think it was good for either candidate. Now, I know that this is going to be displeasing to some in my audience. This is a left wing show. I'm voting for Joe Biden. He's the better choice. But if I came here and told you that it was a great performance by President Biden, uh, not only would I be lying to you, you would then justifiably never trust me again. I call it the way I see it. And for Trump's side, he told endless corrosive lies, a total lack of fact checking combined with Joe Biden seeming confused. The second Joe Biden opened his mouth, I knew it wasn't going to go well. Muting the mics was a good idea, I'll be honest. But the debate kind of made me sick to my stomach because Trump was confidently lying about everything. And because of Biden's poor performance, I worry that this is a very significant net negative for Joe Biden. I was planning to, after the live stream that I did, have some of my beautiful stuffed shells with Rayo's marinara, ricotta basil during the debate. It was tough to do. Uh, Biden didn't look good. I'm voting for the guy, but I I'm sorry. What did he just say? Was that an ad or was he talking about his partner or something? I don't know how the debate won anybody over new to Joe Biden. It was close to a worst case scenario. I can assure you Biden was on no drugs. That's for sure. By the way, Trump's pupils two or three. You don't know that. That's the worst part about this. You definitely don't know that Joe Bi that might have been Joe Biden on the drugs which is an even more horrifying and also likely thought. You're telling me they didn't roll him, they, did, they didn't amp him up before they went out? The reality is that even with the drugs, this is Joe Biden. And the rest of us who haven't been completely lost in a, in a Biden cell copium haze, those of us who haven't been buying dark Brandon merch have seen this for a very long time. This is not new. Once again, I reiterate that we have been making articulated, uh, uh, evidenced arguments against Joe Biden and people told us that, oh, you just want Trump to win. Come on. Times as big as Joe Biden's and rampant. All right, I've had enough of Pacman for now. It's sad too, because um, back in 2016, I called in to David Pacman's show to talk about specifically I called in to talk about how dangerous for trans people I thought that Donald Trump was. That was the night 
that that Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton. I you can go actually find it. You can listen to my old uh, unpracticed before I had learned to be a streamer at all or anything like that. It was long before I even dreamed of being a streamer. I just called in as a normal person. And I called in to talk about that and hopefully inform his audience. But I have to say, David Pakman has been, uh, he's, been a, he's been one of the people on the train for Biden. But at least, at least now he's able to acknowledge it. I'm happy to see that he's able to acknowledge it. The comments here are... The comments here are not in favor of Biden. People are mad about the fact-checking. All right, everybody. I think it's time. Oh, of course, I'll get that there. Sorry, sorry, another board person. I don't know why I didn't get the links. We taught a line to you. Okay, let me get this up here. Since you, you donated, you deserve to have it up here, okay? We're gonna get the last GIF of the night up. Then we're gonna wipe it, and then we're gonna have a big conversation. Oh no, it's not a GIF. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's an MP4. It's not an actual GIF. Oh, painful. Okay, hold on. To make it better, I'll show it to the chat just so that we I make I honor on it even though it's not a GIF. Okay? I'll show it to the chat. Because you deserve to have your shown. You did donate, but I'm not going to I can't I can't go convert it right now. Okay, everybody, here we go. Hold on. We taught a lion to eat tofu. <coughs> True! We taught a 74-year-old man to debate. Cough, cough. There, now it's functionally on there. Okay, everybody. Okay, here's what we need to do, all right? Take your screenshots now. Everybody, take your screenshots. Because momentarily, we are going to wipe it all clean, all right? All right, see, witness, everybody getting your, are you getting your screenshots? At the end, I always ask everybody, get your final screenshot, okay? Here, I'll even make a nice pose for you. Yep, this is like the sand mandala. Are we ready? Jesus Christ, the maximalism is almost biblically accurate in terms of how scary it is. Get your screenshots, this is your last chance, okay? In five seconds, we're gonna wipe the mandala clean. Okay, hey, everybody. Together, we made it through. What a soothing ritual, right? What a soothing, just wiping it all clean together.